What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is the super talented Mr. Jake Ferguson. Hey, guys. And MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, or working for the man. You can email us info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show. Questions, comments, concerns, queries, grievances, artist suggestions, topic ideas. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and MoGraph.com. TikTok. Don't Get stop. our TikTok numbers up, yo. We're trying to do some <laughs> live streams on there. Please follow us on the Please TikToks. That would even be if you amazing. don't, like, you know, even, even if, if you, you don't TikTok. skip past us every single time. You know, at least just follow us so that we can uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do the live streams. Can we just buy TikTok viewers? Can't we just do that? Oh, yeah. Mm, You can can promote things to help you get followers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So maybe we should just put some BS videos on there, like, you know, police chases or something, and then delete (laughs) them once we get the followers. Genius. I don't know. Have to do something like that. Um, so, yes, uh, no emails or anything this week, so... We had uh, an email, it's just in the well, we OT have section. Yeah, it is in the OT section. From uh, an old friend, Gaten. Hey, dear so We'll talk dear about friend. that. OG, OG. Mm-hmm. So, um, we had a baby. Well, not me and Dave, but Dave no. and his girlfriend no. had a baby. No, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Julie and I... Had a baby. Congrats! Shh. Thank you, thank so you. So excited Charlotte, for you. Charlotte, Charlotte Alora. I'll Charlotte show you a little, little picture right here. Oh, oh. Man. There you go. <laughs> there you go. She's doing well. She's um, eating, sleeping, and pooping like they do. Yep. And I uh, do those things, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. She's practically an yeah. adult. <laughs> I know, but when that's all you have to do, right. isn't that the dream? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, yeah. And all they do is cry, and it's the easiest they're going to have it their entire life. Yep. Hmm. So we'll, we'll be talking about some parenting stuff, I'm sure, today. I think we got some, some fun parenting uh, advice to probably give out to, to people. And then, <laughs> Between uh, the three of us, I'm know, sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll give everybody everything they need to know. And I uh, wanted to do some updates, too, on classes. Uh, first of all, if you are interested in the MoGraph scholarship for either the Houdini course or the Unreal course, or know somebody mm-hmm. that has a high cost or barrier to entry into one of these classes, please spread the word. We are doing a scholarship program that is still going. The deadline has been extended now to Halloween. Uh, we, we got some great Unreal ones. Didn't have as many Houdini entries as we thought we would. So if you know somebody who is uh, not super that, noob. Dude, <laughs> and but, honestly, that, that, that class is awesome. It is so oh, yeah. good. It's very good. And it's, yeah. it's um, 40 hours long. It's been updated for 18.5. Now, I know that there are some Houdini 19 questions out mm-hmm. there. And uh, saw Mark the other day, actually. We were talking about this a little bit, and we talked about, you know, we are going to update things in the course, but the updates usually have to do with, like, uh, an interface thing or something that changes, right? 19 comes out, and now this button is over here or whatever mm-hmm. it is. There will either be a note or there will be a video explaining things that might be different. What it won't go over and what won't be updated is, like, new things, yeah. like a karma render and, and, and crazy particle things that are brand new to the mm-hmm. game and uh, that would be a, a new course you know right I'm, sh- I'm sure mark is just raring to just spend another 50 million hours in front of the in front of the computer doing that but yeah. it's a possibility uh, I will say that Caitlin's course is so nice. good and yeah, it's so I'm very close. excited about it it was it was yeah. nice I uh, what's cool about our platform that we use for all the courses and stuff is uh, you can actually, like, airplay it to your TV, which is mm-hmm. great, you know? So yeah. with the Procreate course, I was uh, I was streaming it from, you know, the website or whatever to my TV and then following along with my, uh, with my uh, iPad in bed. It was cool. Yeah. And the beta testers are just absolutely loving it. They had mm-hmm. some great suggestions. 
Uh, they caught a lot of things. Like, you know, a lot of them were like, do you want to know every little thing? I'm like, yes, just put it in there. If yeah. it's something we can't address, we just won't address it. Yeah. Or we'll put a little marker or something or, or a note um, if it's something like that. If it's something we need to re-record, we'll do that. And we, we have. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we can do this in the next two weeks. Um, there's a lot that we have to do as far as re-edits. I got a meeting with Pickle Nick right mm-hmm. after uh, the show, but I'm working right now on the promo. The promo is going to be great. I love working on the promo stuff for mm-hmm. these classes. It's really fun to make something super fun and and uh, and just catchy. And mm-hmm. I love that part. I love picking the music and doing a little 3D work. And Dave I don't like grabbing the sound creative. bites. But yeah, grabbing the sound bites is a hard part because it's yeah. like you got to go through the whole entire course to get the one or two little... Yeah. You know, this is awesome, or you're going <laughs> to love this, or whatever those little <laughs> phrases may be. Um, but I spent the entire weekend going through the course, pulling out all those things, going through all the changes. We're really trying to get this uh, wrapped up, put a bow on it, ship it. Mm-hmm. And so check that out. Oh, and and the, the scholarship, by the way, MoGraph.com slash scholarship. Uh, I, I need to put some sort of link on the front page to it, although now it's a little bit late because we only have two two weeks left. But... Please tell everybody about it um, and uh, send them a link. You know, there are there are people that, uh, for example, are decent at motion graphics or Cinema 4D, and like you can tell that if they just went to the next level and hopped into Houdini, that they would be awesome. But maybe they aren't able to go to school or aren't able mm-hmm. to buy a course or uh, whatever it is, uh, or in another country where. Mm-hmm. Like, unfortunately, there's not much we can do to regulate, like, the cost, uh, you know, compared to income in other mm-hmm. countries, too. It's a hard thing to do because how do you even manage that? How do you even say, okay, well, this is affordable in the U.S. at, you know, $300, but that's a month's salary in another country. How do you... How do you make that even? How do you make that fair? So mm-hmm. we're trying to figure out answers to some of those questions, and one of those things we wanted to do is put that scholarship out there um, so that uh, people who can't afford it or have these barriers are able to check it out and, and learn and perfect their craft. So that's that. And then we got the uh, we got a WandaVision article. If mm-hmm. you're on the site, mograph.com slash news, check out the WandaVision article. We've had some great articles lately. And uh, I think that wraps it up for the week wrap-up. Um, unless you have anything else, Matt, I don't know. I mean, there's a ton of NFT stuff, but that's about it. You know? Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. yeah, We got some good NFT stuff to talk about today. I think it'll be a good segment in general. So, Jake, let's Hi. talk about you. Hello, <laughs> let's Jake. Let's talk about you. Hello. Hello. Uh, what am I... Well, you were talking about before the show the last time that you saw uh, Matt it's probably yeah. the last time I saw you too was mm-hmm. in Van- was it Vancouver yeah. Seagraph? Seagraph. Yeah, Vancouver 2018 Seagraph. Been a little while at the time I think you were you were coming out on behalf of Otoy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I was staffed uh, right? there at the time mm-hmm. yeah um, so so let's let's get to know you a little bit and uh, and talk about how you got into 3D render engines Rubbing elbows with O Toy. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, where did you go to school? Uh, I went to school at Ringling. And, oh, okay. Uh, Sarasota, Florida. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cool. What year was that? I graduated 2016. Okay. 2016. Yeah. So, was, was that Was Joey? Brodeur teaching yeah. then? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was nice. the was very, Brodeur? very thin, uh, you know, Venn diagram of Joey Corman teaching animation there. And oh, that's yeah, funny. He, yeah. he was my like foundational animation teacher mm-hmm. my sophomore nice. year. He introduced me to After Effects. He introduced me to Cinema 4D, and that's ingrained so many you know good habits that I still carry around. But yeah, uh, he, nice. he's amazing. You know, still a good friend. Was that something that like how did you decide that that's what you wanted to do? Were you already <laughs> into this before college, or was it something where you're like, I don't know what this is, I'll give it a go? It was it was that <laughs> literally like <laughs> so. Before I went to college, I was a tattoo artist uh, and a body oh, cool. piercer, and 
I, you know, really had no end to computers or any of that. You know, I always loved movies, you know, but I wasn't planning on going to college. You know, I was a tattoo artist in high school. I was planning on just rolling into that and staying in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, (laughs) you know, I loved movies, though, like really loved movies. And I knew I wanted to work on something that moved. And I had no idea how. So I just kind of like, you know, wrote, wrote it off as some dream that would never happen. Um, but I was uh, I was tattooing one night, and these two dudes walked in, and they were there for a uh, Pucifer concert, and they were shooting Oblivion at the time in Baton mm-hmm. Rouge, the uh, Tom Cruise mm-hmm. movie, and mm-hmm. they these two were set guys, and we got to talking. You know, they wanted Pucifer tattoos, and I'm like, that's rad, and you know, they were talking about you know just what they did, and they they were you know on set like fabricators. They did a lot of. Uh, you know, rocks and stuff like that. They made a bunch of faux rocks and faux, you know, materials. Mm -hmm. Um, And just finishing in general, they would do a lot of, you know, (laughs) real life shaders, basically. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. (laughs) And Uh I asked them, I'm like, who's your your boss? Who do you report to? And they're like, well, we have a a art director and he comes up with all, you know, our day to day and stuff. I'm like, Mm -hmm. who's his boss? And they're Mm -hmm. like, that's a production designer. You know, he, he does the overarching of like all the scenes and everything and just comes up with the look and pulls the reference and mm-hmm. time of day, stuff like that. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Now I have titles that I can kind of, that's a, that's a little up. bit closer, you know, this is yeah. slightly yeah. more tangible. And I didn't know shit at the time. I didn't know like, you know, what anything having to do with onset was or what the steps to get there would be. Um, so kind of fortuitously, a few months later, there was this portfolio convention in New Orleans and mm-hmm. where a bunch of different schools, like art schools and colleges came out. I was a kid, man. I was like, how old was I at the time? 18, 17. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so I'm like, I had I had this really rich portfolio. Like I was a fine artist for my whole life prior to that point you know it's like mm. i had just i had done photo real portrait portraiture and like charcoal and acrylic and stuff like that i did a lot of watercolor you know mm. I, I was just a very you know tactile artist plus you know all the tattooing and everything is just yeah. another yeah. it was another medium you know so mm. i i was very well versed in the art world you know and I, I was i was good you know and so it's like i had this like cool portfolio i just had no you know technical ability i had never really touched a computer besides uh for video games um, so, you know, I showed up there with my big fine art portfolio and I'm walking around from booth to booth and I'm asking each of the colleges, I'm like, what, what kind of major do you offer for somebody who wants to be an art director? Mm-hmm. And I didn't really clarify. I didn't say, you know, if this was for commercial right. or on set or anything like that, because mm-hmm. I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know that there were different types of art directors. I didn't, I was yeah. so ignorant to all industries at the time that I just like went in with this very broad title and it was, it, I, it wasn't intentional at the time, but it served as like a litmus test for who mm-hmm. I was talking to because every one of those colleges, they're just like, uh, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> you know, graphic design, <laughs> maybe film. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And right. <laughs> uh, they should, they should have, you would but, think, yeah, you would yeah. think. And I rolled up to Ringling and they're like, Oh, you want to major in motion design? And I'm like, cool. <laughs> and I, d- I didn't ask what it was or anything like that. And they were just like, yeah, you want to do that? And I'm like, okay, I like your confidence. Yes, I uh, do. Yeah, let's do yes. that. And, um, <laughs> you know, you could kind of get half approved for your application on the spot. They could check out your portfolio and say yay mm-hmm. or nay to that. And then, like, if mm-hmm. all the financial stuff went through, uh, you know, you, you'd, you'd be approved at that point and you'd uh, get your acceptance. Um, now, Ringling, uh, you know, I saw the tuition. I saw, like, everything I'm like there's no fucking way I'm not going to get into this. Like there's absolutely no way, you know, it's like, it's so outrageously expensive. It's not, it's not feasible for me. You know, it's like, and also I, I don't know if, you know, they, they want somebody like me, yada, yada. I was just, I, I wasn't like down on myself. I was just trying to be like realistic and like kind of prepare for the worst in case it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I ended up getting accepted and I was, I was stoked, you know, I was really stoked. And a lot of my family came together and they, they helped put me through it. And, you know, they, they gave me that initial jumping off point, you know, and I yeah. was just like, man, this is a huge deal. Like I'm the first person in my family to like go to college. And yeah. mm-hmm. so they really, really wanted me to go. And like, they always like knew I had a lot of talent and they always pushed me and they were just like, you know, you're, 
you're a good artist. You should do things with your life. You know, <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> well, you can do things that like none of us have done. So, you know, I was really excited about that, and it, it just it it kind of put this uh, this motive in me to succeed and this um you know i it, it motivated me to to just really kick ass when i got there you know so yeah. i showed up I, and i yeah. s- i still yeah. had no idea what i was doing you know what <laughs> what motion design was i literally was just like yes to everything and just showed up mm-hmm. and i roll into my first class and they're like all right you're gonna be learning after effects and i'm like cool okay so let's do it <laughs> yeah Let's uh, sure. let's learn how to animate. I guess so. I spent you know a few months in Lynda dot com just familiarizing myself with the Adobe programs because everybody else in that school already knew them, and I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I got mm-hmm. a lot to catch up on. And honestly, man, the first two years I sucked. <laughs> I mm-hmm. was my work was not good, you know. So, and, and it's just like I. It wasn't even that it was technically bad. It's just like my taste was so off in my ability to kind of uh, know how far I was reaching. Like, all my projects were overly ambitious. They never got fully finished. You know, I mm-hmm. spent so much time, Sounds you know? like my project. <laughs> my <laughs> God. Yeah, I'm still guilty of doing that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like I just spent so much time, like, all-nighters every single week just trying to like I felt like I was like catching up but like not even to anybody in particular like I was just like felt like I was like catching up to myself you know because it's like Mm -hmm. I'm coming out of one medium that I'm really strong in and I'm never using that again (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. so I have to completely rebuild my technical skill set um but then you know my junior year I started getting pretty good and uh my senior year I felt very good you know I was I had some really kick-ass internships um you know my uh my sophomore year after that year i went to toil in boston as mm-hmm. a company that joey corman actually started and you know i <laughs> he definitely helped me get that internship yeah <laughs> um <laughs> but those guys are great you know it's like they they set a lot of standards for me for studio life and just kind of how to interact professionally you know and i did have some professional experience you know but it's like that type of setting is just a lot different than anything else i was used to and you know just just understanding the you know the food chain and this kind of industry you know where clients sit where ad agencies sit you know it's mm-hmm. like what what kind of work needs to get done and just you know it was, it was a lot of stuff that they don't teach you in school that they still don't yeah, teach you it's just sure. that kind of professional practice yeah. um so that was invaluable you know in boston is one of the coolest cities i've ever been to if it didn't get so cold i would love to live there but Mm -hmm. i hate the cold so (laughs) here i am in (laughs) california um and then you know i went back to school my junior year and busted my ass to make a lot of cool stuff and try and learn a lot of new things and then i landed a um internship at imaginary forces my junior year and yeah no big deal that that (laughs) that kind of like from there on i was like all right i need to you know kick ass forever now you know i can't i can't let this momentum go like that's a huge opportunity so you know i showed up there and um i had some of the most amazing mentors i had ever had and i've had so many mentors throughout my life you know just for artistically you know i've studied under so many masterful like truly masterful people um Mm -hmm. but you know michelle doherty uh charles Corey, dan meehan karen fong like Mm-hmm. monsters absolute like titans when it comes to this stuff man they've been doing yeah. it for so long and they just live and breathe like this amazing you know not only work ethic but just taste and good practice and just like like the social ability of, ju- of just like like being so kind and forgiving and patient with it like i don't know i was over the moon you know every single day was just like an incredible blessing to be there and to be around such you know immensely powerful artists and then also to like meet all these crazy freelance artists that were coming in Mm -hmm. um but you know i was an intern i still screwed things up all the time made people stay late (laughs) and you know Uh soaked up an entire render farm on the day before a job was being delivered and totally threw that for them so that was cool you know learned a lot of valuable (laughs) lessons um but that was great you know that was a really good internship and then i went back to ringling my senior year and um made a couple theses with some buddies and graduated um and it's funny too because i i applied you know i i had a, I had a good portfolio i honestly like i had like like a, a good professional portfolio in school you know and mm-hmm. 
I applied to probably 120 places, you know, around January 4th, you know, mm-hmm. for to start working in the summer, you know, so mm-hmm. a good six months early just to get it in there. Maybe I applied too early because I heard back from three. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. And and I like that's the only reason I say my portfolio was good because like I was I was hireable, like definitely, but still, you know, it's like it's hard out there, man. <laughs> it's really hard to get uh, like a full time. What was gig. your work like at that point? Were you already like heavy into like three D yeah, octane texturing all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had been using octane for like a year prior to that point, you know, and I was I was good at it by then. And um and you know, I could I could do matte paintings. I could do really good compositing. Um, you know, I, I heavily focused on compositing in school. You know, and that's actually what led me into three D is just to make stuff to composite because that's why I like doing the most. Um, mm-hmm. I still like doing. Were that you the most. like introduced to to Octane at Ringling, or is this something you kind of figured out on the side? <laughs> um, no, they didn't have it. They uh, we only used <laughs> the uh, the physical render in college. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was funny. So you were doing like us, like you were like, what is this Octane 2.0 thing? It was mm-hmm. people, man. It was people. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, yeah. We were following him already for a couple years. You know, we're like, oh, this guy's been doing, you know, every days for a few years. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And you put zero day out probably around that time. I think it was before that. Yeah. It was, it was a before while. zero day. It was a while. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Definitely before zero day. Like maybe like two year, two or three years before that we were, we were seeing oh, this nice. stuff. And, you know, we always thought he was kind of cool because he's just like, he's kind of nerdy, you know, and funny. And like, he just like made all this like really awesome stuff just for the sake of making it, you know? And mm-hmm. we were like, wow, yeah. this is great. You know, this is like, and he it, shares it and he, he shares it. Away. it. You know, that, 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 yeah. that was the coolest thing is that like, you know, he had his site with all of his, like his VJ loops and everything like that. And it was all creative comments. And we're like, this is not just inspirational from an art point. This is inspirational from somebody who's just able to make for the sake of making, you know, coming yeah. from like a really high up art school where we just critique each other all day, mm-hmm. every day. And we're so hard. And we're just like, why are you making this? What's the point of making this? Like, why is this good? Like defend this. And he's just out there just enjoying making stuff. And I'm like, see that that's mm-hmm. cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and he started using octane and we were like, man, this stuff has really cool glows. <laughs> what the yeah. what the hell is this? You know, and um, and I didn't even realize it at the time because I, I bought like this prefab computer, and I'm like, oh my, I have an Nvidia card. I could just I could just get this, and I bought it. And yeah. I'm like, oh my god, this is the coolest thing ever. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm moving around and seeing what I'm doing, and I don't have to wait for the Real time. little boxes yeah. or anything like that. And you know, it, it was. It was slow, but you know, it's like it <laughs> was still, so good at the time compared to the physical render. Yeah. It was a Ferrari, like mm-hmm. it was amazing. Yeah, so you know, honestly, I've never done every days or anything like that, and I kind of unintentionally, when I got Octane, I was like, all right, I just need to practice, you know. So for the next like thirty days, I made like a bunch of random stuff every day, you know, and I started posting it, and um, mm-hmm. I was like, this is this is coming out cool. I, I know how to use this now, you know? So from then on, it and that was like summer 2015 when I first started using it. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it became, you know, my best friend. It was amazing. Like we, me yeah. and my friend uh, Eric Demusi, uh, he was working at IF oh, yeah. when I was an intern. Who and, did the, the Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah, he uh, and I are title, close. Yeah. Yeah, he's we, been on. He, yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's funny, man. I, I love that guy. Yeah. But um, he... Uh, you know, he and I sat next to each other like my whole internship, and we always hit it off. And he and I got Octane at the same time. He was making mm-hmm. uh, his Boba Fett short film uh, mm-hmm. trailer thing, <laughs> and I was um, just dicking around being an intern. And <laughs> we were both like just freaking out over this. We're like, this is the craziest thing, you know, because before that point, he had done all of his VFX for, you know, his own films and everything. So I think he was always looking for, you know, a, a way just do it more efficiently and continue doing it by himself, you know, cause I know mm-hmm. he loves having that creative control and he just has mm-hmm. such an immense, you know, technical ability and artistry. Um, so we both really nerded out over that and we ended up get like pushing, I have to start using it a little bit. We started using it on some of our jobs and we were just mm-hmm. like, like we, we, I think I had, was using like a Radeon on like a Hackintosh at the time, you know? <laughs> and I was just like, man, this, this, this isn't it. Like we need to <laughs> do something a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> Around that time we were still on Mac. We had the big mm-hmm. Mac pro cheese mm-hmm. graders yep. and we were retrofitting these graphics cards, mm-hmm. these NVIDIA yeah. cards into them 
and downloading the other driver like the you're not supposed to use these drivers <laughs> but here they are drivers yeah. yeah and then hooking up the extra power supplies directly into them all hacked hacked up and the side is off of it because you can't yep. even put the side on anymore you know mm-hmm. just yeah man yeah, that, th- like, those were exciting times like you know we felt yeah. like pi- pioneers at the time you know like you're just discovering I know, this I ancient technology i, I, I kind of like current day a lot more oh, yeah. than <laughs> well <laughs> me too <laughs> you hacky, can't go uh, back <laughs> hacky mac day <laughs> there's something about being in your 20s i think that like makes you want to do that stuff yeah mm-hmm. and then and then in the 30s you get in the late 30s and it's like yeah, that was fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was fun, but uh, don't have much uh, extra time anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And when I yeah. installed that Octane demo, I was like, uh, yeah, I'm buying this mm-hmm. right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah dude. the demo for me lasted about 10 minutes. I'm like, it's straight yeah. up. Yeah, it was the same for yeah. me. Yeah, it was just, I was so blown away by the tech, you know, such an enormous fan of it, you know, and it just, I attribute so much of where I am to that software. Like, that just, that was it. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, well, this is a good yeah. time to go to Ravcock. What's your flavor? What's your flavor? Oh, it's Octane. And we'll insert this in the middle of your in the middle <laughs> yeah, of just, your story just because that right in there. <laughs> yeah, because render engines, <laughs> you know, vital. I, yeah. I, well, I'm curious though. Okay, tell us how you ended up at Otoy. Oh man, yeah. So the the, the story continues, and it's yes. It, just uh, keep going. It, yeah. Um, so we'll I, just say we're in Ravcock. Now. So I graduated <laughs> college. I got a staff position at Imaginary Forces. Went right back. You know, fell in love with it. Loved the people. Loved Santa Monica. Uh, you know, it was, it was great. So I was like, absolutely going right back to LA. Um, and they had IF New York at the time, and I was thinking about going there, but again, hate the cold. So in, in yeah. California, but um. You know, so I, I was at, when I got there, I was kind of sad to see that most of my friends were gone. You know, they had some really heavy hitting creative directors there: uh, Miguel Lee, Charles Corey, and Dan Meehan, who were very technical creative directors. You know, they would pitch on jobs, and then they would make the whole job just between mm-hmm. them. You know, and like not really hire anybody else to help. And they, they didn't do that with every job, but like there were a few that they did. You know, and mm-hmm. like. I'm like you guys are beasts, man. Like that—that's what I want to be. And they were gone. They had—they had left. Um, and so I was kind of bummed out about that. And they had—they had all gone freelance. You know, Miguel is a um, teacher at Art Center, and he has his own company, uh, Midnight Sherpa. Mm-hmm. So he went to focus on that. And uh, I think Dan and Charles both went, both went to Elastic as freelance. And I don't know where they're at these days. Um, so you know, I. Uh, I was like, all right, who do I lean on? And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit. There's really no, like, not that many other, like, staff artists here. A ton of responsibility just, like, fell on me as soon as I walked in the door. And I'm like, oh, my God, all right. You know, we didn't even have a a TD at the time. And I'm like, shit, (laughs) I really need to, you know, step this up. So, again, became a huge, uh, you know, step in my career where I'm like, I need to catch up to something. I need to just mm-hmm. like really like spend the time and kick ass. So, you know, it was a ton of late nights, ton of jobs. Um, of course there was freelance help for everything. You know, it's like, I, I'm not saying I did anything by myself ever, you know, it's always mm-hmm. just like, let's find some badasses to help get this done, you know, cause mm-hmm. if left to me, it wouldn't get done. There's no, it's not humanly <laughs> possible with my skill set at the time. So I, um, you know, I, we, we did a lot of really good stuff, and the following summer, 2017, you know, there was this really cool job for um, for Counterpart. Uh, it was a TV show that was coming out on Stars with J.K. Simmons about split realities and spy espionage. Awesome stuff, cool. you know, and we actually had pitched on it November of 2016, you know, and production didn't start until summer 2017, but between those two points you know we were doing pre-pro and it was a very small budget job we could only really get like myself and whatever interns we had at the time on it and um you know we did a lot of design work for it uh philippe carvalho I, i'm sure you guys know him he's a designer out of uh mm-hmm. portugal he uh he did the initial pitch with karen fong and mm-hmm. you know, kind of, kind of set the the mood for everything, you know, and came up with a lot of the z- design language. So all the designs we did going forward, we just riffed off of that. And um, Nathan Lee was a 
uh, intern at the time, and he was a phenomenal designer. And he did all the designs with Karen Fong for like six months. That poor guy just worked into the ground, just doing all this <laughs> stuff by himself. But it looked so good, you know, and it's like it provided some awesome. And I kind of came in at the end, you know, and shaped up a lot of the stuff that he had pushed forward. I did a lot of my own designs too, you know, and just started building out scenes, you know, which would eventually evolve into shots. And then we went into mm -hmm. production where we had another intern for the summer, which was uh, Kyu Nam, who was a really good friend of mine from college, you know, and I had known him the whole time I was at college, and I, I called him up. I'm like, hey, do you want an internship this summer? I need your help with this specific job. And mm. he helped me that whole summer, and between he and I, we made that, that whole job together. We did every bit of animation for it. Um, and that job uh, went on to winning an Emmy, you know, so that was awesome. huge for us, you know, it was mm -hmm. huge for Philippe because that was the first Emmy to ever go to Portugal. You know, he met the president and shit. They had a parade for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Yeah. So it was a good time, man. It was like, that was a magical night, you know, and it's like we were up against some really, really gnarly competition. You know, we were up against the, uh, the alienist and, um, Oh my god, I'm spacing out so bad I can't. We were up against Westworld. We were up against uh, mm. just a, a few other really heavy jobs, you know. And I had so many friends at the time that were all like that all, had all worked on all those jobs, you know. So it's mm -hmm. like when we found out that we were all nominated, we were like, "Oh, that's right. great," you know. But like we were all <laughs> sitting in the audience hoping our job would win, you know. Right. <laughs> so anyway, um, so you know, I, at that point, you know, I was kind of. I was like, it was nice to finish that job at IF, but I was a little, I was a little burnt out, you know. And I had been doing freelance prior to that point, um, and one of those freelance uh, clients that I had was Otoy, mm -hmm. um, and my friend Tyler Hecox, he was doing, uh, he was doing freelance for them, and he had called me on for a job, and that's kind of how I got introduced to them. And he's like, can you can you roll by Otoy tonight and just like come talk to them about this job? And I'm like, sure, man. Mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, that sounds fine. I don't have anything else going on. I could do some side work. Uh, and I'm like, oh, toy, great. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm a huge Octane nerd. Like, I would love to yeah. see, you know, where everything's made. And um, and I roll up, and um, and somebody lets me, like, I walk out of the elevator, and I have to get escorted in. Mm -hmm. And and this guy rolls out, and he's got a hoodie. He's, you know, he's got, like, a, <laughs> a scruffy beard and crazy hair mm -hmm. and just, like, this crazy look in his eye. I'm like, what's up, dude? And he's like, oh, hey, are you, are you Jake? Are you, come this way they want to talk to you and i'm like okay and i'm like so what's up man like who are you what do you do here and he's like oh i'm Jul <laughs> i'm jules erbach and i'm like yeah and i'm i'm <laughs> still such a kid i'm like who <laughs> i didn't yeah. say i didn't say that but you know it's like rolling in there you know it's and, like yeah and, yeah right on right yeah on. i'm like cool man yeah nice to meet you and everything and my friend in there and he's like wide-eyed when jewel walks in the yeah. room and walks out and, my, and he's like that's him and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's who. <laughs> and so that's the guy. Yeah. So anyway, so you know, I get going on these jobs with them. We we have a good working relationship, and um, we go through a few freelance jobs and everything. You know, it's like, man, it's like I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty comfy with y'all. Like you got some cool stuff going on, mm -hmm. and you know, I have, I was getting burnt out at the time. There wasn't that many staff artists. Um, that I, there was a lot that I was doing. You know, I was juggling about three jobs at the same time at one point. It's just, it was a lot, you know, because I was the lead on a lot of stuff, you know, so I felt very personally responsible for a lot of things. And um, I would go home thinking about it. And, you know, it's like, like, I, I put myself in this position because I was still so green, honestly. I didn't communicate a lot of my own boundaries. I didn't, never said that I was uncomfortable with a lot of things, mm. um, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, eventually, you know, Otoy was like, "Hey, do you, we need a staff art director. Do you do you want to be staff here?" And I'm like, "Maybe." And they made an <laughs> offer, and I'm like, "Okay, yeah, definitely." <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I moved um, I moved to downtown LA, like two blocks from the office. You know, and I uh, I worked there for about a year. You know, and it was a it was a one of the most interesting jobs I've ever had. <laughs> It was, mm -hmm. it was very, it was, it was very cool, very strange, but very cool. You know, well, what would you do on a regular basis there? Because like, I, I don't understand even what that position would be. Yeah. Man, I still, I still don't know what that position was, but <laughs> I, I had a great time, and I just like artist representative, basically, right? Much, You're just yeah. like, yeah, so. 
I was kind of the liaison between Otoy and well-known artists. And I would okay. talk mm-hmm. to them. I would, you know, secure their work for trade shows. I would, you know, do whatever I needed to there. Honestly, it's like that place always has so much going on with so many right. clients you will never even hear of, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and just interesting interactions like being on email chains with like jj abrams and answering c4d mm-hmm. questions because right. he's an octane user and yeah he does it for right. fun <laughs> and i'm like yeah. okay or you know joel zimmerman which you know i'm sure you guys know right yeah <laughs> so yeah. you know it, it was just a lot of little things here and there but you know the actual responsibilities were pretty centered around a lot of the trade shows you know it's like getting ready for SIGGRAPH getting ready for GTC getting ready for you know what, what, whatever else and it would just be kind of amassing uh, the artwork that we could show you know mm-hmm. um, you know doing doing demos that could be shown on the floor and like also taking you, criticisms taking, for, yeah. from MoGraph podcast oh yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> you know oh yeah don't even get me started on like this the C4D uh, um, help desk emails that I would have to get through a lot and just like you know I was I was just kind of their C4D guy at the time you know and yeah yeah I was never super technical. I was. I'm not Beppe by any means, dude. Beppe mm-hmm. is like his own or entity. Or Ahmed. Yeah. Ahmed or, yeah, is. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Dude, like, I w- I would just get emails and I would just hit those two up and be like, "Can you guys solve this?" And then I can mm-hmm. take credit for the solve and let them know <laughs> how to do this. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ahmed, like he he, I don't I don't even know like. Does he have a whole team working for him, or is he just a one man show? It's Nobody kind of like knows, this show, right? He's a, he's yeah. a myth. He's, he's a man. <laughs> literally. He's just he's just out there, just doing it. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, I don't Still know. I don't know. Recent Turkey, I don't know right? Has, um, I think so. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, wow. but yeah, it, it's funny. Like, like I got a hold of him via Facebook Messenger. Like, I'm like, we both have Otoy emails. <laughs> like, yeah, and still I'm messaging you on Facebook. That's yeah. Funny. Anyway, um, yeah. So outside of trade shows, there was there was a ton of downtime. You know, I was uh, there was I had some fun. You know, people there that I was working with at the time. You know, Billy Brooks was there, and he was uh, he was kind of like the Otoy or Octane Lightwave guy. Um, mm-hmm. Clay Sparks was mm-hmm. dude. He, love Clay. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. one of my closest friends, man. I I love that guy. And to, and just to let you know of the the experience there, that was a year of Clay and I in a room mm-hmm. together with a closed door. <laughs> like, yeah, it was just the two of us sitting in there. Like most of the time, just like messing around with scan data, or you know, just sharing cool, like watching movie trailers, watching movies. You know, just like <laughs> it was fun. It was dreaming like, about the holiday. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And occasionally, you know, something really cool like VR would come in, and we both like get together and work on it, or like some AR stuff, and. We we had jobs. They were just like you know, like 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 projects and gigs. They were just you know, yeah, kind of rare. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, there was a ton of downtime, you know. And I was working on like such an expensive computer, and I was just <laughs> like, man, I'm just gonna mess around and like learn a lot of Octane stuff and get better, you know, and like work on a. Well, that was the thing, man. Like Ariev, when when we went to whatever show where we saw you kind of for the first time, I don't even think we met you at that particular show. Cause you were like on a pedestal oh, over yeah. here yeah, with was, the, yeah. Nab, know, on the Otoy machine. <laughs> yeah. I think that was uh, NAB 2017. Yeah. Or 2018. Probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. God only knows at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, you were there at the Maxon booth representing Otoy. Otoy. With you know, and showing stuff off. And Aria was like, dude, this guy, <laughs> like what he does with textures and, <laughs> materials and octane stuff it's amazing it's like oh i can't talk to him he's he's too powerful <laughs> that was fun man yeah everybody got to come up and we just got to look at like you know i was just messing with skin stuff i think at the time just metals mm-hmm. and i think mm-hmm. um triplanar projecting came out kind of recently mm-hmm. so i was just like showing kind of how you can do some cool procedural rust and like all this other stuff mm-hmm. and just yeah you know, that's back before stuff. we could try force yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, man, I, uh, it, it was a fun time. I, I really loved working there, you know. And I, I um, when I when I left, you know, I was, uh, 
what did I, do? I you know I, I really I wanted to go freelance when I originally left Imaginary Forces but Otoy swooped me up you know that was my plan was to go freelance anyway um, so it just kind of got offset mm-hmm. by a year and then mm-hmm. I went freelance kind of the end of 2018 and uh, my first gig was at Elastic doing Captain Marvel with them that was a lot of fun um that was my second marvel gig at the time um it was a i I always told myself i'm like i will do one marvel show and one marvel feature and then i'm never touching one of their jobs (laughs) yeah ever again (laughs) and uh, rightfully so you know it's like very cool work very hard people to work with um i was gonna i bet it's scrutinized oh my god it's it's just so demanding dude it was like I, I worked 50 days straight. Um, I took off for the Super Bowl, and that was about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was fine, you know. Made a ton of money, but it's like, at what cost? Like, how many years did I shave off my right. life with those 50 days? Right. <laughs> but, right. you know, it's like, honestly, that that's just another kind of lesson for me on a long string of lessons of just professional boundaries. And, you know, that being... The most important thing you can do professionally is just setting boundaries and pacing yourself mm-hmm. and being realistic with yourself, you know, mm-hmm. and not over promising and not, you know, putting yeah. yourself out there for something that is going to damage you, you know, mentally, yeah. physically, like <laughs> you really like prioritizing your health and mental health. It's it's vital. You know, it's yeah. like, what are you going to do if you're and, and it's, it's hard to to even understand like you hear people talk about it oh i worked this gig and it was so draining and then Mm -hmm. something like that happens to you and then you're like okay i get it now exactly i'm never letting that happen Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and have have you been to um have you been back to otoy recently no i I haven't been in there oh my god when's the last time i was in there I'll let it pick up my last check, honestly. I still live next <laughs> to them for like another two years, and I saw Clay and Jules all the time just going to the grocery. You know, yeah, it's like <laughs> we were neighbors, <laughs> you know, but, um, and I would hang out with Clay a lot. And, um, but being back, actually back in the office, no, I've heard it's changed a lot, though. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're remodeling. We were there uh, about a month ago oh, yeah. or yeah, so, and putting the, in a staircase. You know, the staircase like where the logo cut a hole is right in the middle of the floor. And now Jesus it's, Christ! Yeah. Yeah, did they, cool. they bought the? Yeah. Did they buy the floor below? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the uh, the the main what what room is that? When you come in the when you come in the the door, mm-hmm. that room right there is the now really really turf. long one. The uh, mm, well, when yeah. you okay, you walk in, and then to the right is kind of like that conference there, room or where that used conference to be, room was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a conference room, but there's room. turf. He put yeah, turf down on it. Oh turf down on the That's floor. amazing. Like grass. Cool. I love that. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> is it for Susie? Is it just for Susie? I have no idea. His little white dog. <laughs> I don't know. Him I don't. Be. I don't know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised. I saw the dog. The dog was nice. <laughs> it's a cute dog. Yeah, it's funny, man. Because like, you know, I, since I was so close, I would stay there pretty late, and they had such a better computer than I did at the time. You know? <laughs> and yeah. It would be like two in the morning, and there'd be nobody there, and I'd turn around and like a hundred feet away, like there's just this little white dog, like standing just staring staring. at me like with like a mm-hmm. spotlight on it basically i'm like i, I think that means it's time for me to go home <laughs> that's funny he points up a paw and mm-hmm. finger and basically. just points it right at you yeah yeah and jules would also be wandering around you know and he'd uh he'd stop by and we'd, we'd talk a lot and that's kind of how he and i got close um such a sweetheart man yeah i, I do miss working with them they were uh they were a really special bunch you know they had mm-hmm. just a personality and imagination that you don't see anywhere else, you know, and just this genuineness, you know, I just, mm-hmm. I, I'll always value my time at Otoy, you know, I'm yeah. happy I left. I'm happy I'm not there anymore, but I, I loved being there, you know, and it was, it was just a very good, good place. And you know, Jules and, and his background and his, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, his, you know, Marvel and Star Trek mm-hmm. background, and all of that and the holodeck and all of that. And, um, we we had the render wars <laughs> and i feel like the render wars have kind of like at least come to a treaty for now yeah basically. the the new thing though is gonna be the rt wars yeah yeah 
So you got Unreal, and then you have the the render engines that are going to real time. Mm-hmm. Redshift RT and Brigade. Yeah. So looking forward to Brigade. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Br- finally, you know, it's like I, I've known about Brigade yeah. like for years and years and years, and I'm like, okay, finally this is coming out because it's like all the tests that they would show all the time at GTC and like all the mm-hmm. like yeah. we had access to a lot of stuff in the office too. You know, it's like we were messing around with a lot of stuff like that, and it's just like finally. You guys yeah. are making this for Well, consumers. a lot of it's sort of like the technology finally catching up exactly. to yeah. the goal. Now, yeah. That, yeah. That's, what, that's what's kind of amazing about Jules. You know, he's, he's got this, like, crystal ball that he tells nobody about where he can see, like, ten years into yeah. the future and talk about it as if it's the present. You know, and people yeah, are talking to him. like, what the hell are you talking about, man? And then it, like, right. comes true, and it's like, God damn, man. They're like, oh, I get yeah, it now. That's not a crystal ball. It just happens to be his brain. <laughs> Holodeck. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's an extraordinary human being, truly. I, I've never yeah. met somebody anywhere near his caliber. You know? yeah. Yeah. Just being around him, you know, it's like you, you get it. You know, you, you, you've, you felt it, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, it's you so hard to even. Yeah. You feel the energy and you're trying to just keep track with keep track of what he's saying mm-hmm. because it's like, like oh i'm gonna miss yeah. something yeah. like yeah. i i don't know how he even thinks of it that fast because mm-hmm. i can't even comprehend yeah. it that fast yeah, the yeah. best thing you can do is <laughs> just you know nab on to something that makes sense and hold on to that you know and don't mm-hmm. forget yeah. that one thing and then maybe next time you talk to him you'll get another little nugget of you know mm-hmm. the future <laughs> yeah well the first time that we ever had him on the show oh my gosh i could not even <laughs> I could. I didn't understand half of it. Now I feel yeah. like I understand a little bit more. Yeah, or at yeah. least kind of. I feel like I understand most of it. Right. Yeah. yeah, you become yeah. you become a little bit more fluent. Uh, it, it takes practice. You know, it's like learning a new language. Yeah, yeah, but, it uh, is. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a um, great guy. He's put out some previews of a couple things on Facebook, and I know that his talk is coming up this month or next. I don't remember exactly when, but. You know they've they've got the the photon tracer kernel and the brigade kernel coming and then um, stuff like you know toggle real time on and off and all that mm-hmm. and um, so we're we're gonna have him on it's the Monday after Thanksgiving he'll be okay. on to talk about that because he'll have done his talk by then and we're really gonna be able to pick his brain I think a little bit about brigade I'm so yeah. excited oh, and, and it looks yeah. like some of it's worked out like or, like maybe a year ago when we spoke I think he was talking about the fact that. Uh, brigade couldn't currently do volumes mm-hmm. and and a couple other things and now he said it does yep. and i'm like man like this is going to be between yeah. redshift rt beta and this brigade thing like mm-hmm. um we you know you've got unreal and we were over at barton damer's uh last week and we were talking about some of the real time stuff and he made a great point he's like we don't have to go f- seek out real time real time right. is going to find us oh, yeah right yeah, it's going to be an escape pretty a, soon yeah because everybody's like, oh, I got to check out Unreal, or I'm not going to be able to do this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, are, are, really? Yeah. Yeah. Or you could just keep what, doing what you're doing and not have to learn something new, and you're probably going to be fine. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's always been my philosophy. You know, look at look at GPU renders. You know, it's like yeah. it used to be so niche, and so few studios had it. You know, and then mm-hmm. just all of a sudden, if you don't have it, it's like what yeah. like what are you doing yeah. how many yeah. cpu renders or uh, uh studios are there currently yeah, you straight know? up man as a dying and, and how many projects are you going to work on possibly depending on what kind of an artist you are that won't even need anything but brigade right exactly. somebody needs a, a very quick product render done or something that's like and it looks just jobs, fine yeah. mm-hmm. you're not going to switch back over to one yeah. minute of frame straight you're going to go to real time yeah straight yeah. up man yeah, it's like I, I've always, you know, the the shops that I've worked at and the stuff that I've done for my side work, it's all been very skeleton crew based projects, you know, where it's like we don't have that much money, we don't have that much equipment, we just need to make a very small amount of something look very expensive and look very mm-hmm. cool you know so sure. and I, I still do that you know i'm so used to not using a render farm you know it's like i hack so much shit together to make quick render times and like yep. you do so and like like i said i'm, a, I'm yeah. a compositor you know it's like i come from a compositing background so mm-hmm. i think in layers i think in compositing i think in like yes. oh this looks Same. terrible coming out of cg Same. but i already know what right. terrible is going to turn into you know so yeah. i can like compensate mm-hmm. for that but you know, just run it through topaz and yeah. throw a bunch yeah, of yeah. filters on day. top of it. 
<laughs> yeah, so I'm excited for real time. I think it's going to be cool, you know, and just being able to go, you know, balls to the wall with a lot of stuff that, like, already I had to optimize, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just I'm stoked, you know. It's going to be very cool. Yeah, it will yeah. be. I was just uh, uh, my my uh, to change the subject a little bit and kind of stay on the subject. Um, my brother was just texting me. He's like, are you watching the Apple event? Apple just announced a bunch <laughs> oh, of new, like lap laptops. Yeah, on the 18th. Mm. You know, oh, it's yeah, not the right. AR the stuff that you were also telling me it was going to be. Well, this is the t I, <laughs> I was kind of joking because I knew this is when the new MacBooks were supposed to come yeah. out. But they yeah. just announced a bunch of MacBooks and stuff. That's cool. But they were showing off Cinema 4D and they were also showing off Octane standalone oh, nice. and stuff. And it was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, really that cool. would be what. Yeah, I got an email from Jules this morning. He's like, make sure you watch this today. And I'm yeah, like, that's, <laughs> why. that's why. That's funny. <laughs> I see. Trophy. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to pull that up, put that in the notes for next week. <laughs> Hopefully, there's a clip of just that part we can clip and show. Yeah, it's like right here. It was it was right when I turned it on. My brother was saying that they're was showing funny. a lot of Cinema 4D. Oh, that's cool. Good. Yeah. That's good. That's good yeah. for them. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you had a kid not too long ago. I did. Oh, when was that? <laughs> uh, that will be three months ago this week. Yeah. It was, uh, okay. July three months. Twenty third. Okay. Yeah. Y'all are in the right. thick of it, man. Mm -hmm. I, my, my kid just turned like 19 months or whatever. He's about to de turn two. Nice. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in cake I town don't now. Oh, yeah. I've so been one. Out. So your kid is one. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Dude, there's a huge difference between like <sighs> months when you're... Whatever. Uh, you haven't had yeah, to deal with this for what? 11, 12 years or something like that? 12 years. Yeah, 12 but years. still, even so, I'm just like... They're no. one. Yes, they're my two. kid is one, but there is a big difference between 12 months and 23 months. Yeah. That is a yes, huge difference. Yes, my kid is 4% 36 months old. It's a huge, it's a huge, yeah, once you get to two, then you can stop. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm noticing the difference between weeks at this point. So I yeah, could, yeah, seriously. Like, they are crazy little things, man, but it's, yeah. it's I, I see why people call it a miracle, man, because it's like, you're looking at this and it's like, we made you like you were a brand <laughs> new human dude like yeah. you didn't exist before yeah the craziest mm -hmm. render of all time dude i'm just right like, yeah but yeah no just a lot of definitely you know, not real time no god no. yeah just nine month render no big deal um, <laughs> but yeah it's just like yeah between the the shitting and screaming and eating and sleeping and shitting and screaming and eating like mm -hmm. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. my life but um yeah i i you know took a two-month paternity leave which was really nice um that is that's, nice. that's about that's the longest a long time. i've gone without working uh since i started working so that yeah. felt cool and that kind of you know i i freelance full-time so you know i i've always wanted to be one of those people that only works for like nine or ten months out of the year so i think that mm -hmm. kind of uh you know dialed back the fear that decision, that decision. Yeah, yeah yeah you know <laughs> i was always scared i'm like oh i need money constantly coming in in order to survive you know and i just i'm like you know what if i'm gonna miss work this is the best time to do it and yeah shit i was fine yeah. so <laughs> i'm gonna maybe i'll just start doing that and you know hopefully when we can travel again i can <laughs> use all these travel points that i've racked up from not leaving yeah. the house for the last two years <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure that's man two months is tough i'm i am a I enjoy some time off. I enjoy like, like if I'm like, okay, I need a day off. This is going to be my day off. This is yeah. the day that I'm going to like do nothing and play video games and, and whatever. Right. But after a day, I'm just like, <laughs> eh, I don't know. Well, what do I do now? Surf TikTok? <laughs> like I'm, yeah. you know, if you're at in the home, age of COVID, if, you, if in you're the age of home, COVID, you're at like, home. Like, right. yeah. 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 No, I, I don't Especially know. Especially with. Y'all and y'all's new babies or whatever. Me, I'm like, get out of the house. I'm I'm ready to like go somewhere. Yeah, you know. Oh my god, same dude. And I'm I took about to... two weeks, not not a full two weeks, but like my second week, I was like two hours a day. Yeah, yeah. You know, and starting to kind of get back into the right. swing. And I just, it's not that I don't enjoy that time but then there's the point where i'm just like i am sitting and watching tv now <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm just like i just have i just have the bug to go do something and not just sit here right yeah yeah and some people are like that some people aren't but like i can only take so much i feel like after two months i would just not to know what to do with myself on my to-do list and the e like how does your email not pile up in two months <laughs> 
Like, how do you handle that? I'm sure you check your email. Oh, right? yeah, you yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I sit there replying to my email. Yeah, it's funny, too. It's like every time that I'm off or I just get, like, a big booking or something, that's when, like, everybody and their mother starts emailing me. It's like, yeah. hey, are you free? Like, hey, it's like, I, I mean, I've been doing this for the last year. I push people off quarterly at this point. I'm like, check back in, you know, Q3, Q4. Yeah. Maybe we'll get something in there. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I... Uh, I love and I hate this about myself, but I could retire tomorrow and never work again and be as happy as a clam, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like occasionally sure make some like 3D stuff, but it's like, if I had the money to do it, you better believe I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's all I'm working towards right now. (laughs) Straight up, man. I'm the same way. I just like, like, I I love my job. I'm super blessed to like have a job that. I both love that I'm good at and that makes money, but it's still a job. <laughs> I'm still, yeah. you know, doing stuff yeah. for other people and doing stuff like yep. at the bidding of clients. So, you know, it's like, it's the most amount of freedom that you can have, but it's still not, you know, I, I, I could, if you were going to do like your own thing, what, what would it be? Cause you would probably stay, would you do like a, a short film or what would that go thing back to be tattooing? Oh man, I would play video games all day. Or a 3D video day. about tattooing? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'd literally play video games all day. <laughs> no, there you go. And yeah. just be a Twitch streamer, right? Yeah, no, yeah, dude, oh, yeah. I am so envious of those people. Uh, for one, I don't have the personality for it. For two, yeah. if I started monetizing it, it might not be as fun. And Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but I don't know. You should give it a go. Just try not be like mash that like and subscribe yeah, button, ding that bell. <laughs> Come on, that time. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I have so many cool music videos in my head. I would definitely mm-hmm. go make some of those. You know, I like yeah. just amazing. Yeah. I'm right there with you. 3D character driven music videos, and you know, the character pipeline is just getting so much more accessible. And it's mm-hmm. that's that's always been my biggest personal fascination. Like I um. I don't really post a lot of my personal stuff. I don't really make a ton of personal stuff anymore, but I did recently learn X-Gen. Mm-hmm. Really, I learned it in uh, Maya for uh, grooming and hair. It's like the... Oh. That's oh, what yeah, people yeah, use yeah. for hair, you know, for all hair. And that... I, I used uh, Flip Normal's um, X-Gen, intro to X-Gen. It was like mm-hmm. learning Chinese overnight. Like, seriously, <laughs> 10 hours, and you'll know it. And I had never used Maya up until that point, and I literally got it just to... Oh, that's a double difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I thought it would be awful, um, and it wasn't. It taught, Like, Maya was always this big, scary thing in the distance. I had only mm-hmm. opened it in the past and then closed it really fast from anxiety. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's... If you're doing one thing in it and nothing else, it's not that scary, you know? But, um, no, you know, I, like, it, it was great learning how to do that, you know, because hair was, I, I love doing people, I love doing faces, you know, and photo real faces, but mm-hmm. hair was always a huge, yeah. like, thing for me, you know? And it's like, you can only do so much with Daz hair, you know? And it's like, Motion yeah. designers, we just we like to take a lot of stuff and just put it together, you know. And like, well, and step step one is I'm not good at faces, so I'm going to do an astronaut because then I don't have to show the face. <laughs> yeah. Step two is I'm not I, I'm okay at faces, but I'm not good at hair, right. so everybody's so going to be bald. bald guy, yeah, mm-hmm. or have a big right. like helmet or a hat or something, yeah. So yeah. you know, it's like it's just nice to now be able to do it, you know, and do that stuff. And honestly, it's like. I um oh there's Bo mm. oh baby <laughs> that's my little Bo <laughs> <laughs> um but you, you know it's like being able to do that now it, it's it's very cool and eventually I do want to make some more portraits you know because I I know I have it in me to make some really really cool ones mm-hmm. um but you know it's like that's uh, cool stuff right there what did you use for that or oh for right these here ones oh man so this project. Oh my god, it was such a doozy. So this was this was pre COVID. This was twenty nineteen is when we mm-hmm. made this. And it was for the Olympics, um, for twenty twenty. Okay. And SK two is a Japanese makeup company and they came to us, they're like, Hey, we want to showcase all these um, 
you know, kick ass women in the Olympics. We we have this whole campaign of uh, of beauty not being a competition and just like like you know preserving people's natural beauty, inner strength, all this stuff, and nothing to do with makeup. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And they also had purchased the biggest advertising space in the Olympics out of everybody, oh, wow. you know. And so we're like, okay, we we have you know a shit ton of money. We want to commission these six. Uh, you know, love, death, and robots type films, mm-hmm. um, and make this like anthology about these six different female athletes. And you know, there were some really badass companies that worked on it. You know, Platige did one of them. Um, we we did two of them at IF. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, they they were all different styles, all different concepts, and everything. But the one that they you know really uh, kind of roped me into was the one for the um, the Japanese surfer because this is the first mm-hmm. Olympics that they were doing Olympic surfing, you know. And mm-hmm. the Japanese mm-hmm. surfer uh, Mahina Maeda, she, you know, was born in Japan and a Japanese citizen, but she grew up in Hawaii. And oh, that's cool. you know, she, she's a phenomenal surfer and super cool human being. So you know, they wanted to make a piece about her, and you know. Each concept was influenced by the real life struggles of this athlete, you know. So Mahina's biggest struggle was kind of, you know, having her own beauty standards in Hawaii, and then when she would when she went to Japan, realizing that they had this very long lineage of traditional beauty standards that she didn't really identify with, you know. So it's mm-hmm. like coming to terms with, you know, this like social beauty standard and her own. So we came up with this concept where basically she's uh, like the the 2D version of her is in this um, Japanese temple in Edo period Japan and it's not really much of a temple it's more of a, a school like a beauty school and she uh, you know is to go through these lessons to learn uh, what what is beautiful you know it is, it is beautiful mm-hmm. to, to have your hair done up it is beautiful to you know speak softly to to walk mm. softly and slowly just all these very traditional things you know and through the whole film she's she's kind of you know not real like like affiliating with any of these she's like like none of these are me like like does this mean that i'm not beautiful like all this stuff mm-hmm. you know and the whole meantime you know she it's kind of it's like a gilded prison you know it's like she's kind of trapped in this place to learn these things but the outside there's this suspended like wave like huge wave and she catches it out of the window a few times and she's like man that is that's drawing me in that's something that mm-hmm. i want that's not traditional beauty but something in me wants to be out there you know and Mm -hmm. eventually you know the the instructor in the palace you know is like you know this this isn't you you're not really any of these things and she busts out of there and she goes to the wave and she surfs the wave and then like you know the the instructor and all of you know her peers are like supporting her at the end of it and they're like beauty is you know what what you make it out to be it's 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 your inner strength you know and so that's the that's like a loose concept behind the whole thing. So it's like we came up with that concept and we're like, what kind of style do we do for this? You know, because it's like Edo period Japan had these and, and the other, you know, feudal eras of Japan had these gorgeous uh, screens that would go and, and, and just walls in general throughout their castles and palaces that were mm-hmm. these gorgeous like paintings with gold leaf and, and just really intricate stuff that were always you know uh, stories of culture and you know just beautiful scenery and just just little impressions of of trademark Japanese culture and mm-hmm. we're like okay how do we utilize something like that you know so we came up <laughs> Henry Chang is staff at IF. He currently lives in Taiwan, and he is like a sleeper cell. Like some of the best stuff you've ever seen produced by Imaginary Forces was that guy. He mm-hmm. he he just he makes so much for them, and he is one of the most powerful artists I've ever worked with. You know, so he and I, you know, we were the first people on that job. We pitched it. We kind of sold across the style, and he's so technical, three C wise, and. You know, so like between he and I, we came, we came up with just this technical path on how to mm-hmm. do this, and we we tested it a little bit, but there were so many things that had to happen in order to like really test it that we never 
could. We only had to like come up with it and hope that it would work in production. And oh, luckily, geez. it did, and mo- mostly because a lot of that was revolving around um, mocap. You know, so we had to like mm-hmm. do like some light tests with like some stuff that we could grab off Mixamo, but then it's like we had to wait for our actual mocap shoot in order to get a lot of the assets to work. So basically what mm-hmm. we wanted to do is we we kind of our, our mission statement is like we wanted to have a three D kind of realistic background. And when I say realistic, like still very stylized. And you, you can see it in some of the style frames um that I had posted, but it, it, there was a lot of like you know reflections would work there was real materials and everything real like fall off and volumetrics and but we wanted our characters to be 2D you know mm-hmm. and we didn't have the budget to do full cell animation there was a ton of moving fabric for all the costumes and everything um, so we're like we have to use Mixamo we have to use like like either Sketch and Tune or Cell Shader or something you know and we just really pushed the limits of 2D, 3D to get this to work. You know, I um, we had an intern at the time uh, whose name was Ella Lee, and she uh, was able to take our, you know, Mahina's face, her real life face, and then take kind of this reference painting that we got from a. Um, uh, a Japanese painter who who painted Mahina in this really cool 2D style, and Ella was able to repaint her from every angle. So we had reference for her oh, face, wow. and then we got a cell animator to you know animate all the facial expressions in this style and make uh, like a, a UV of just her a static face doing all the expressions, and then we put it on the 3D character, you know, and we did a whole Mixamo thing, Henry took all these real life kimonos and um you know the obi bell and 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 every every asset you know and was able to put it like tailor it and mix them all and make these like perfect outfits you know and then we figured out good methods to render it and everything and we would render out the the face flat just with that and we would do this cool like kind of brushy lighting on the face just in after effects you know just by using masks and levels and stuff and yeah, it was it was the most raggedy pipeline I've ever <laughs> worked on, but yeah, the result there I've never seen anything like it. You know, it's like it was just such a cool collaboration. And and doing anything with mocap, like I I haven't really done much mocap at all, and I want to, but also I don't want to. It's a pain in the ass. Because I yeah. I kind of know it's it is not an easy process. Such a pain, dude. Yeah, there there was. <laughs> You know, some really cool little methods here and there that we learned. Uh, my friend Russ uh, Gothia, he... Uh, I love you, Russ. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Dude, Russ yeah. is such a sweetheart, you know? He, yeah. He's a, he's staff at IF, you know? We've done a ton of stuff together. Um, but he, he was like... I'm like, Russ... I'll be right back. I don't, I don't know how to how to stick something to a, to a mocap face. Like, I don't know how to, like, parent to a point of a moving Alembic. You know, he's like, well, you probably do an FBX. Yeah. I'm like, man, all we have is Alembics. Like, I, I, that's all how I have to do it. And he's like, okay, here's what you do. And he, he, was like, he was like, find a point on the face, isolate that point with a selection, and then use a cloner and just like clone an object and use that point as the object and just clone one thing and it'll just stick to it. And I'm like, Holy shit. Yeah. So I could do like a custom head onto like a, a mocap thing or whatever else. And I'm just like, man, just, just little stuff like that. Like little discoveries. Stuff. Yeah. I'm mean, just yeah. like, this is how it's done, you know? But that was, this is a six minute film. And there was like a Good handful Lord. of us that made it, man. And like render times honestly weren't bad because it was like very 2D, but yeah. Still, but still six, six minutes. Six minutes. It was, it was a yeah. doozy, you know? We were all doing like, yeah. like, 30, 40 shots. And then I, I graded and did the final composite on the whole thing at the end, you know? And that was... I've never had a beefier After Effects project. The entire <laughs> thing, not even just, like, rendered shots to be graded, every single shot was in there in pieces, you know? So it's like, like you go in there and you'll find the original 3D sequence of any given shot. And like, that whole, that whole project uh, collected just out of After Effects was a terabyte and a half. Jeez. <laughs> it's insane, yeah. <laughs> but oh, my God. It was fun. It was, it was cool to be able to grade that stuff. I, I had just gotten a... Um, 
a new HPZ monitor, and that, that was phenomenal color at the time. It's like uh, the project is uh, 1.5 terabytes, and now we got to back it up. So mm-hmm. that's their problem, dude. Let's, let's yeah, buy I was, drive. that was the days that I was remoting in. I was just like, yeah, yeah. never again am I doing something like that. <laughs> like that Jeez. project was a doozy, but I loved it. You know, the project's super special to me. I do want to go to MoGraph Recommends, but first I wanted to mention a couple links. We already talked about Houdini 19, Sneak Peek, and the mm-hmm. live uh, show of whatever their, what would you call it, the presentation of all the new features and stuff was going on about an hour ago. So we'll put a link to that video as well once that's done. Also, I wanted to mention specifically this um, this one Vimeo link called Colors and Shapes. Uh, it is by Mac Miller. Uh, I'll bring it up here. And uh, I saw Arya posted this yesterday, actually, and it is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'll bring it up after the ads, of course. You know, there's always ads. Um, and also, of course, I don't want to show the whole thing because you know how YouTube loves loves to flag people for all the things. But I wanted to show you just a taste of how incredible this looks. Because, first of all, I, I have an appreciation for anybody that can do animal animation, but this is, this is next level. This is next level. And a lot of people worked on this. It just wasn't, wasn't just one person. <laughs> but I'm going to put a link to this in the notes, because if you have not seen this, just mind-blowing what it must have taken to do this piece. I mean, the, the amount of work on the dog alone is so good. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that'll be in the notes. That's all you get to see because I don't want to get flagged. Jesus, that's that's insane. Um, but we will now go to MoGraph Recommends. This is going to be the section where we ask you about your uh, your favorite things. Um, I'm going to use the restroom, and Matt's going to start you out because I can't hold it any longer. <laughs> I've been drinking all. That's the why I had to leave. Usual. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but we will start out with your favorite movie. Mm-hmm. My favorite movie. Your favorite. Yes. My favorite movie. Yeah. Um, man, I have a, I I have a guess. Okay. I have Let's a hear guess. It. What type? Of, well, there's there's uh, if if you're gonna pick some obscure movie that I've never heard of, <laughs> you know, um, uh, which that might be the case, or you may say if you're going to pick a mainstream movie, yeah, you know. I have an idea, but okay, go ahead. Let's, let's hear your go mainstream ahead. guess. No, no, no. I want to hear, because if okay. I'm way off, I'm not going to tell you what it well, is. Well, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like my favorite movie, it shifts around a lot. It depends mm-hmm. on my mood. and um, But my go-to at any point that I could always watch is a Revenant, man. Like Okay. Anything by NR2 is just like, that. that's my mm-hmm. go-to. I, I love his work i love everything he does you know beautiful is amazing you know birdman was amazing <laughs> birdman was great oh my yeah. god it's such a good movie such a um, good movie yeah i'm kind of blanking i feel like i saw something kind of recently that i really loved um mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah it's so hard because it's like it's, it's like asking my asking me my favorite music you know it's like it depends yeah. on you know what i'm into but it's like there's a lot of stuff that's up there that's really good like moonlight phenomenal movie um Mm -hmm. just about like i love a24 films you know it's like they they never miss you know like yeah like a lot of people i know talked a lot of shit about the green knight loved the green knight that was great Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean if i had to pick my overall favorite forever the revenant for sure cool i don't think i've ever seen it what I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yo, oh my god! Yeah. Do yourself a favor and like darken the whole room. Biggest screen you got, loudest speakers you got. Just immerse yourself. You will mm-hmm. lose yourself in that camera work. It, that that movie's phenomenal because they never. Oh, that's the one that Leo won an Oscar yes, for. Yes, like right? okay. <laughs> it's because he ate dirt in the movie. But, oh, um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. Holy now I remember shit. now. You two will lose your minds. Like, okay. and keep in mind that a hundred percent of the film is natural lighting, and they didn't use any lighting at all that wasn't Whoa. natural. Um, really? And they filmed half of it in Canada, and then the ice started to melt, and then they had to finish the rest in Argentina. So, okay. <laughs> and it's all supposed to be in like Missouri. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea it was all natural light. That's that's uh, impressive. I mean, did they use bounce cards? Or at least? Maybe. Yeah, I, I mean... I'm sure they had to. I feel like that would be... Yeah acceptable. Yeah. It wouldn't be cheating, yeah. right? But yeah, they didn't haul any lights around. They just hauled a bunch of cameras around. And when you see the locations wow. and yeah, I mean it's like you know how Birdman how like it doesn't break much? Yeah. yeah. They do they yeah. do a lot of that in this. I mean that's just kind of in R 2s thing or I guess Chibo's thing. Um uh-huh. but man, yeah, that that film is just there's no time where I won't watch that, you know, and be thrilled. Right. I think I think I saw that shit in theaters like seven times. Like I was just like, right. I can't get enough of I'm this. In. I'm sold. Hi, my name is Sashia Dumont. I'm a writer, actor, and filmmaker. Hi, my name is Paul Robinson. I'm a director, DP, and filmmaker. We are the creators and hosts of the Go Gorilla Filmcast, an online source for all things indie film. We are a husband and wife film team and co-owners of Send 3 Productions, and we started this podcast for filmmakers like ourselves who were producing on micro-budgets with Skeleton Crews. Go Gorilla is a weekly podcast that features various talents in TV, film, and web series productions. We've interviewed filmmaker powerhouses like Kestrin Pantera, Richard Raymond, Alex Ferrari, Cassandra Ebner, and Ryan Connolly. Amazing actors like Hannah Ward, Lou Taylor Pucci, Chris Wataski, and Eileen Gruba. Groundbreaking cinematographers like Jody Lee Lipes and Jessica Lee Gagne, and many more. We also offer weekly reviews of our favorite films and shows, which vary from low-budget first-time filmmakers to A-listers and everyone in between. Go Gorilla is proud to announce that we have officially joined the MoGraph Podcast Network. So if you love filmmaking as much as we do, tune in every Sunday for a new episode of the Go Gorilla Filmcast. Your, your source, source for, for all things indie film. film. Now available on the MoGraph Podcast Network. Um, um, yeah. What about... What about TV shows while yeah. we're on that note? Oh, TV been watching shows. Man, I w- Squid Games yeah, or something? Squid, Squid Game was great. I love Squid Game. Um, but is it yeah. overrated or is it good? Is it great. Yeah. Is it oh, worth- my God. It was great. Okay. Yeah, but I also, I love, um, you know, any, uh, it sounds weird, but it's like uh, almost every Korean movie or show I've watched is phenomenal. You know, it's like, yeah. like, um, like I've been going back and watching a lot of uh, Bong Joon Ho's movies during the pandemic, you know, just and then you know Parasite when that came out, mm-hmm. we watched that. And I was like, wow, this is great, you know. And I went back and you know watched The Host and watched, um, which was great. And I had never seen Snowpiercer, and that was good, even though that was very um, was awesome. It's super cool, you know. It yeah. felt like it had like a lot of like corporate grubby hands on it for the, some of the creative decisions, but it was still <laughs> very good. Yeah. Um, and uh, Memories of Murder was also great. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, such a good one. Um, but uh, I'm the the thing that kind of like like Squid Game is great, but it's taking a lot of all the attention, and a lot of people are missing Midnight Mass. Like, mm-hmm. dude, Midnight Mass hmm. is one of the coolest dark thrillers, and like I guess you could consider it heard of horror, it. but it's a, it's a Netflix original, and it's by the hmm. same guy who did Haunting on Hill House. Which was terrible. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's not. It's not a, the zombie thing that's out right no, now. Is it? No, 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 dude, yeah, something else? yeah, dude. Mike, Mike uh, Finnegan, Flanagan. I don't remember. I'm sorry, um, but he, he's hit or miss, man. He did Hush. Flanagan, Flanagan. Yeah, yeah. He, he did Hush, which was amazing. He also did Oculus, which sucked. He did Haunting on Hill House, which was terrible. But Midnight Mass, man, is it, one of the best shows I've watched in so long it had such an amazing script it you know was just so well done so many good monologues so many like spooky Mm. ass cinematography and just like pacing it was great it was it was great great. yeah it's like and the location was awesome it was like i would love a resident evil game that's there Mm mm-hmm I was waiting for Kevin to chime in with his picks for TV shows, but I bet you he's watching the Apple announcement. He's watching Apple. See, over over already. Oh, Uh, and now as far as music, I have a question for you, real quick, before we get into your music choices. With your name being Jake, are you allowed to listen to anything less than Jake? Oh my gosh. You're so fired. I've, I've never even heard of what. Are you, what are you talking about? Anyway, you don't know less than Jake. I don't. One of the greatest ska bands of all time. Oh, I couldn't no. even name you a, a song they do, but I just thought it would be funny. <laughs> I'm sure Matt uh, now, knows. Now I know homework. plenty. I'll go, yes. I'll go listen to some ska music after this. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's exactly what Matt, my Monday Matt morning was missing. <laughs> 
So what what do you listen to while you're while you're working? Um, I listen to all kinds of stuff. Um, I love Idols. Is this punk band from Bristol, and mm-hmm. they're wonderful. Oh my god, mm-hmm. they are so good. It's like like super heavy duty <laughs> neoliberal punk music, <laughs> but it, nice. it's great, dude. The the actual you know the lyrics are great. The sound is just wonderful they're super super talented i'm gonna see them in la in november i couldn't be more excited um but i also listen to a shit ton of soundtrack music (laughs) Mm -hmm. and a lot of like old norse music (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i'm really really into a lot of uh northern european history and old norse history particularly between like like 800 ad and about 1200 um, so, you know, a lot of stuff that's rooted in that type of stuff and even stuff before that, like a lot of proto-Germanic music, it's, it's bizarre, but it's cool, man. I, I definitely vibe, now, is that vibe out. But like mostly when you're working or just all the time? Uh, all, <laughs> like, honestly, the music when I work and the music when I'm not working, it's all kind of the same, you know, I just like, yeah, yeah I'm oh, just okay. always listening to whatever I'm feeling at the time. Um, I listen to a lot of soundtrack music. Uh, the King soundtrack is wonderful. Nicholas Bertel, he's incredibly talented. He did Moonlight soundtrack as well, which is also phenomenal. I think that's my demo reel song. Um, mm-hmm. I listen to a lot of video game soundtracks. Mm-hmm. I, you know, the Assassin's Creed Valhalla soundtrack is like a bajillion hours long, so that's some good old <laughs> Norse music too, and that's by one of my favorite Norwegian composers. Um, the Witcher soundtrack is great. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but what else? I also listen to a lot of, you know, really bluesy stuff. Um, and, you know, just some... Any some, sort of EDM, techno stuff? Uh, it always gets me going when I'm doing graphics for some reason. I don't know Nothing why. after 2002. <laughs> um, like, so pre Skrillex. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely had pre chopping and screwing. I definitely had a lot of that stuff that I was into. Um, you know, when I was younger, I would go to a lot of those shows and enjoy them and everything. But you know, I just like a lot of like Apex Twin. Yeah, no, Apex, <laughs> Apex. Twin is still is still great. You know, it's like I just listen to a lot of um, you know like older you know Atlanta based DJs and Detroit based DJs from the nineties and mm. you know just like really um, you know heavy techno you know not really edm mm-hmm. not house or anything but like straight up techno um bass nectar remember that <laughs> i used to love bass nectar dude i used to love bass nectar but yeah i can't tell you the last time i listened to a bass nectar song <laughs> you at least have to hold on to the cd because oh, yeah. <laughs> you know like when when somebody when you pull up and someone's like asking about your stereo and you got to show like <laughs> you got to push your stereo and show what them subs do you got to put in the bass right, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you know, that was yeah yeah absolutely <clears throat> yeah um, no, my, my music taste is all over the place man like i listen to a lot of spanish music i listen to a lot of jazz i listen to a lot of spanish jazz <laughs> you don't listen to ska at all though i, I don't i can't Obviously. say i listen to ska i'm very sorry about that um i've been a lot into uh, japanese jazz lately um Let's see. I'm just going through like my recently liked tracks. I love John Hopkins. He's great. You know, that's probably like yes. if there's any kind of yeah. recent techno stuff here, or like just EDM mm-hmm. in general. He, he's, I, you can consider him either. Honestly, he's just so like um, I don't know, all over the place. Uh, Obs- kind of abstract. Yeah, it's not yeah. really techno. It's not. It's maybe more in the wheelhouse of Ratatat. Yeah. Okay. Way. Yeah. 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 That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, Oh, just to quickly go back to movies real quick. I did see a kick-ass movie that you two would probably enjoy. Um, mm-hmm. It's called uh, The Empty Man on HBO okay. Max. I haven't heard of it. Man, that, that's some excellent cosmic horror right there. The ending is kind of huh. eh, but like the concept is dope. And the first 20 minutes are just about the most perfect horror short I've ever seen in my life. And not a fan of horror. HBO Max. What did you just say? You're not a fan of yeah. horror? No, yeah, I'm I'm kind of the same. I, I try. I get too scared. <laughs> Man, I love I'll that. I see. I, it's just like a true good, like spooky experience for me. Is just it's kind of rare. You know, it's like mm-hmm. there's really just not that much media that that gets me. You know, but mm-hmm. um, but that what about Saw. Saw must have. 
<laughs> and I saw it was just like gore porn, man. Like I just wasn't like I like of course I was I was a kid when that came out, so I'm like, oh, this is so cool, you know, just to be edgy. Mm-hmm. And like I go see him in theaters, and I'm like, <laughs> this is fun, you know. It's like very like, you know, the side of me that is like. I guess would be into watching gladiators duke it out. <laughs> That's kind of the same mm. thing that you get yeah. out of watching those kind of movies. But yeah, it's just I don't know. It doesn't really do it for me anymore. It makes me think of terrible things that my brain doesn't even want to think about. <laughs> We're all capable. Yeah. You know. There's a yeah. there's a there's a French term, I forget what it is, but it's uh it's just it's it's a it's a single word and it means just like it translates to looking into the void and that's what describes that feeling. Hmm. Uh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, podcasts. Podcast. Do you listen to podcasts? Um, yes. <laughs> I listen to a spooky podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's uh, it's called Radio Rental, and um, All right. it's good. It's like it doesn't really have hosts as much. It's just real spooky stories told by real people, and it's okay. kind of short. And there's not really okay. that many of them out right now. It's very good. Um, there's another one called Supernatural with Ashley Flowers that I really like. And that's, mm-hmm. she's got a wonderful voice and she just goes through, you know, it's not really scary. It's just like more kind of mysteries or unsolved mysteries of just like weird shit that happens, you know, and like mostly in the U.S. Um, alien abduction stuff, stuff like that. Cold <laughs> cases, spontaneous you know, combustion. Usual. Yeah, the usual. <laughs> um, yeah. Swindled is a really good one that's like uh, just corporate espionage and just like fuck shit that you know a lot of big corporations do um, I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys know about like the Radeon girls it would be stuff like that you know uh, it's uh, Radeon girls yeah basically in like you know the 30s there was this company that put uh, glow in the dark um, numbers on, on watch faces you know and you had to use a very tiny brush to do it oh yeah and you know the, and it, it was it was radioactive it was radioactive right? yeah and they hired yeah, yeah. like all these these girls to work there for like you know like one cent per watch face or something like that you know and every time mm-hmm. you like dip the brush you know and you paint it and then you have to lick it so they're all just like eating radiation and oh. just you know their their jaws would rot and stuff like that and, right. you know fun stuff yeah but swindled would be stuff like that where it's just like a lot of like terrible shit that big companies would do and get away with um, okay let's see um rev says you can literally stop saw traps with a screwdriver and a gear it's good to know hmm. <laughs> that's good to know good to know I'll just put a screwdriver in there yeah i guess he's got experience yeah i guess it. so mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> Yeah, they would lick the brushes. I do remember hearing Gnarly. about that. Yeah, I think there's actually a, a Netflix um, piece that came out with it, like a movie or limited series, something like that, but I heard it was good. Now, in the interest of time, remember before we started the show, you're like, how are we ever going to fill up two Dude, hours? Yeah. It's been an hour and this. a half. Yeah, yeah. We, can, we can keep going, man. I'll just... <laughs> I'll okay, good. Yeah, it's fine. Good, good. good. <laughs> yeah. Just making sure you don't have I can, a hard I out. can't believe it. I can't believe, like, yeah. how fast That's it That's what we by. said you'd say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. See, time goes um, by real fast when you talk about yourself, huh? Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's good at that... I anyway. saw... We, we yeah. watched Free Guy... <laughs> This weekend, oh, was it good? that was pretty oh. good. Yeah, yeah, was, was it good? good? And scary. there was something. Oh, uh, Succession is back. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, such a good show. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We watched uh, for the first. We started uh, what we do in the shadows or whatever. <laughs> I love those like, idiot vampires, we, man. <laughs> yeah, we started it last night, and man, it was it was it's weird. This is the second time we've started it, but the first time I think both me and my wife were too preoccupied on our phones or something to pay attention. <laughs> And then this time we were like all in and so man, good. that's going to be our show. That's our it's show now. So it's good, so dude. funny. The, the cast yeah. is so balanced. I love all their yeah. personalities. I, I vibe with that energy vampire so hard. Colin Robinson yeah. is just <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. And like his eyes light up every time he starts draining somebody, uh-huh. like drolling about something. Oh my god! Oh, I'm oh, gonna have man. to check that out. Oh, you should. I've it's, heard of it. Yeah. It's funny. Know much the about original it. movie is yeah. really good too. The original movie. The original movie is hilarious. Yeah, they did a uh, Flight of the Concords, you know, and now you know Taika's doing all kinds of stuff. You know, yeah. he did Thor Ragnarok, and I think he's working on <laughs> Star Wars. Thunder right now. Star Wars, yeah, yeah, hey, he's awesome. Too many mother uckers. <laughs> Huh. I miss I miss that show. Flight of the Concords. <laughs> it's funny, yeah. man. It's so dry. It's like the driest of dry. <laughs> Is that on HBO Max? Wasn't it, it an is. HBO show? Yeah. 
Is it on there? That's on Fox, I'm gonna check yeah. that out. Um, okay, t- tough question, and you can't okay. say a render engine in this <laughs> as the answer. <laughs> the question is, what is your favorite plugin? Oh, um, uh, Red Giant Suite in After Effects. Okay. Oh wow, Great. that was quick. yeah, but that's a whole suite. Which one out of the out of I mean, the suite? Magic Bullet. Technically, okay, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> or Trap Code. All right, but I, uh, All right. I love the the look suite. You know, I've been using it for probably ten years at this point. It's like wow, it's just yeah. such a good grading package, um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and. But I love Trap Code too. You know, Trap Code has uh, like I I don't I'm not a particle guy. I don't. Like doing yeah. particles, I, like I can. I know X particles, and I don't let anybody know I know X particles. But then I guess yeah, like thirty thousand people know I like X particles. Um, <laughs> but, um, um, but you know, it's it's very cool. Everything that you can do, it's just sometimes a little overkill for a lot of stuff that I do. So I use particular all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's very very easy. It's very flat. You know, you can do a lot with it. But I just need to like randomly clone a lot of stuff in after effects i just use x particles you know? use form too but yeah I, I don't know it's like dude it's it's funny because it's like we're always pushing the craziest software to do the craziest things and like the most heavy hitting stuff and then i'm just like spitting a logo for old navy right 90 yeah. <laughs> percent yeah. of the time and mm-hmm. it's like really no I, I love my job i love that you know it's like I can do what I do and also do that, you know, and get paid for both, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, Sarah, oh my gosh, I forgot about that line. The hip hop hippopotamus. Hip hop hippopotamus. My rhymes are bottomless. <laughs> yeah, and then he just can't think of anything. Ah, oh, man, I miss that. Yeah, it's good. I'll check that out again. Uh, favorite app. What is your go-to muscle memory app? If you open up your phone. Oh my uh, favorite app. Um, I hate to say Instagram, but <laughs> it's like, I mean, yeah. who is that? That's okay, that's excluding Instagram to make it a little more interesting. Um, sure. Uh, probably Binance or Coinbase. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Always on those. You're doing two. a lot of crypto, uh, like oh, yeah, yeah. I've done, crypto I've coin stuff? Always done crypto. Uh, you know, it's like I, I'm a big investor. It's it's funny because I like don't touch NFTs, but you know, yeah. I'm a big crypto investor. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, need to get into okay. that that those NFTs. Yeah, yeah, I know. I um, that just goes into that monetization thing. Honestly, I think if I'm, you know, making work for a living during the day, and then I do personal NFTs for money at night, and I'm just, it'll just turn into more work for me. You know, it's like yeah, it it, it kind of disturbs. Like I don't have a problem selling stuff I've already made, but if I think if I make something with the intention of selling it. It would spoil mm-hmm. it for me, you know. It's like there's like yeah, a sacredness I, to my personal work. Yeah, there's also a like a feeling like you know if you don't sell it, you're a failure. Straight up, yeah. Know? It's like I don't need that. Which is like, <laughs> yeah. no. Do you know how much money I'm making actually doing client work for stuff? Who That's are people I'm who saying, are willing yeah, for me to work like, for them? It's like it's, it's weird, but yeah, it's like I I make enough, you know. It's like I, it's like yeah, of course it would be nice to get that booster, but it's like I. Yeah. work my ass off for a living you know and it's like mm-hmm. and i'm not discrediting anybody who does nfts obviously because it's like mm-hmm. uh what's her name made or what's his name made like <laughs> millions of dollars you know it's like mm-hmm. i see raf Grissetti popping off i see like all these people i see Arya making a shit ton from it and i'm like yeah mm-hmm. you guys live your lives like that's awesome i'm so stoked for you you know yeah and who wouldn't like to make that much money, you know? And like, who wouldn't like to do that stuff? But right. I don't know. It's just like there. It's it puts me in kind of a a vulnerable state because yeah, like you said, you know, it's like I don't want to. I know I won't be a failure if I don't sell it, but I know that'll creep me. <laughs> right. I know myself, right. you know, and it's like I exactly. I don't know. It's the meme of the guy with the you know pointing to his up. brain, yeah. and it's like. <laughs> You know, can't fail at NFTs if you don't release them. There it is. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. yeah, you don't miss a single shot that you don't shoot. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned video games yeah. earlier. What are your favorite video games? Oh, dude, uh, Amazon's first game came out. Uh, New World? Really? It's, it's an it's a MMO, yeah. And it's, like, huge. It's breaking so many records. It had, like, a million people day one. Um, what platform is this on? On PC. It's on Steam. And it's like 40 bucks. Like, you pay it once, and that's it. No subscription, no anything. And it is phenomenal. It is. What is it called? New World? New World. 
New World. All right, I'm looking yeah, at it now. Yeah, it looks pretty. Dude, New it's World. So it looks cool. very um uh yeah, that one game. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about. I do. The uh I don't. The, that one game. The the that one game. Yeah. The, the thing, South the one with the 45 play. minute intro. Oh, oh Skyrim? Skyrim. <laughs> it, yeah. You it said does, forty-five minute intro. I was like, okay, Skyrim. It does Skyrim. play I was a little thinking. bit like yeah. Skyrim. Um, it play. It, wow. it kind of reminds me of. Um, I don't know if you guys ever played any of the Dragon Age games that Bioware did. You know, there was three of them. Um, mm-hmm. Feels a little bit like the third one as far as like just moving your character around and stuff. But it's it's a cool era. It's like you know, kind of like colonial era. You know, of like like people from like like Spain and England and stuff but instead of coming to America they kind of stop at this island in the middle of the Pacific and it's full of demons so it's like mm. you know oh. yeah it's pretty cool right. and it's just i think what's cool about it is there's like there's a ton of like crafting and stuff you know it's it has a totally player based economy there's no like mm. you know in game economy or anything like that it's completely dictated by players it has totally player based you know social hierarchies and politics and stuff like that it, it's it's very dense you know you have you make a lot of stuff you can buy a house build a chair you know whatever you want to do cook a cook a meal you know fish but you know there's a lot of combat and stuff and I don't know. It's like, it's hard to explain unless you've really been in it, but it's just got so much to do and it's so dense and unforgiving, you know, that it's like hard to put it down because it's like a real challenge. You know what I mean? Like, um, mm-hmm. I, I'm a huge fan of the Dark Souls game. So, you know, those are stupid mm-hmm. hard. And this is yeah. a lot like that. Yeah. These types of games I, I have tried to get into and I can't quite get into them. Not like, Halo or yeah, games that you have to like grind and like you know like do a lot to like yeah do something else yeah you know? I need yeah. like brainless killing <laughs> that I can just pick up and put down those are fun those are a lot of fun there's a good yeah. zombie do one you... that just came out uh, called Back for Blood and that's a, that's a good mindless it's it's kind of like a reboot on Left for Dead um, do you play Halo at all oh yeah no? yeah I was a huge huge Halo yeah. fan yeah I'm excited for the new one Halo Five do you play Halo Five I did I think the last one, the group? last one I played was four. Yeah, I um, oh, you're gonna have to get in our group. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't touched a console in a long time. I um, do just about everything on PC. Is Halo Five on PC? I don't know. I don't keep up with this. No, it's not. no. It's no, like the, the only new one will one be not on mm, PC. Yeah. Convenient. Yeah. The new one will be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but we're gonna do a, a December twelfth mm-hmm. Halo Day. Oh, cool. We're gonna do another Halo Day. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. Once that comes Halo out. Infinite. Yeah. Did you guys? Yeah. Did you guys play uh, all the OGs? You play Combat Evolved and Halo Two and everything. I didn't. I've uh, only played five. That's what? it. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Three, three up for me. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Three, three, three was great. Yeah. Three was one of the best games of all time. Yeah. That was a three game. in the multiplayer. That lasted forever. Plus, oh my they God, it the new for version so of long. it was this. Yeah, it was the, like the new version of it was the same multiplayer when they came out <laughs> with the new. And they're like, yeah, we got a new game, but the multiplayer stays the same. And you're like, okay, yeah, that's fine. It, I, it wasn't yeah. broken, so don't fix it. <laughs> Yeah, now, I, I'm hearing things about like I think Cam and a couple other people were talking about the new one has a li- some things that are a little different, yeah. like the parkour and some of the, th- I'm the excited, though. thrusts cool. and stuff. You know, it's well they they brought it all in by default for five, and now it's kind of scaling back. Mm. And I'm a little worried that yeah. I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna feel like. Am I going to feel too slow? Do, am I going to be able to run in this one? Like, <laughs> probably. Well, at better. least you can run now. When when, when yeah. Reach came out, you know they did a lot of different stuff, and everybody loved Reach. I loved Reach. You know, like they had jetpacks and everything like that, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, so I'm I'm happy for innovation. I also love that the whole game just looks like. It was like rendered on diffuse, basically. <laughs> like it's just mm-hmm. not stupendous looking, but it's very well rounded yeah. and it's very true to itself. There's something super nostalgic about the way that it looks, and I'm like, mm-hmm. that looks so yeah. comfortable to run around it. I'm very excited for that. Mm-hmm. There's there's like still levels that to this day it's like they do throwback levels and stuff are like, Oh, it's so ugly. <laughs> yeah. Like there was one time our whole team got attacked because we're all designers and we were just standing looking there at looking the ground. At, <laughs> yeah. Well, we were looking at these intersecting, ge- this in- intersecting geometry and we're like, Oh, look how crappy this is right here. <laughs> and then we're like, Oh, you. and then all of a sudden we were all being shot, you know, <laughs> whoops. Yeah. So, no, yeah. It's, uh, um, it's definitely crazy how, how far games have come, 
You know, it's a, what, what's really cool about this this Amazon game is it's only a 35 gig download, but that game is huge, and it's yeah. because Amazon streaming most of the game, like the geometry, mm-hmm. and lighting, and everything. So you you turn your settings down to low on the game. And it mm-hmm. still looks gorgeous, you know. Because yeah. that's interesting. So that that's cool, you know. I like. I think they're doing a lot of big, innovative stuff for it. But yeah, it, it was big when it came out. You know, the first week it was like eight hour queues to log in because there's so many people trying to get in. Dang, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like throw it on at like six in the morning, get to work, and then by the time I got off work, you know, I could play. <laughs> hmm. All right. Last question before we go to the drop, and that is. Your favorite life hack, and this can be something like funny or it could be something useful. And um, the example we always give is that Mitch Meyer says, uh, put your toaster on its side for some bomb ass grilled cheese. Mm, yeah, that's now, that's one. kind of a fun hack, but it can be productivity too. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, does it have to be legal? <laughs> uh, no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding no i won't go there <laughs> but um, be careful what you say <laughs> yeah yeah I, straight up um i gotta think about that i can't uh let's see hmm um well i can i can't tell you my favorite but i can tell you my most recent I sure. don't have enough room for two radiators for 3090 hybrids, so one of my radiators is just hanging out of the front of my machine. <laughs> I just literally open the sure. front of it and remove some panels, and it's just chilling, open air. <laughs> I can't think of any yeah. like, good good actual hacks, though. That's... um. It always comes to you after the fact, yeah, literally. right? Yeah, you know? yeah that's So as soon as yeah, as soon as we go to the drop, you're going to be like, oh. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, I know. Figure figure out your the door frame that you most often walk under and put uh, pull up handles under it. Ah, that's a good one. So so and every time yeah. you walk under, just just do one or two. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only exercise. I that's a good one. Days. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, trick yourself. <laughs> because if you don't, you'll just feel <laughs> trick bad. yourself into working out. Yeah, you you'll feel terrible if you walk under it and don't do anything. You'll just right. stare at it the whole time because it's so like it's such a shape, and you're just like, mm. yeah, <laughs> secretly judging you the entire time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, Matt, are you ready for yeah, the drop? Yeah, let's go to the drop. The drop. 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 Is this the fucking my drop? This is exactly what I should be doing. <laughs> What's up and welcome to this week's episode of The Drop, your weekly source for all things NFT and crypto art, as well as upcoming drops by notable people in the motion-mo-graph industry. <laughs> I'm Matt Milstead, as always, joining us is Dave Koss, and joining us today is Jake Ferguson. Hello. So, um, yeah, let's get into some of these drops. I'm, I'm, I'm a little annoyed by uh, uh, Nifty Gateway. I'm not going to do a drop on Nifty Gateway talk about their drops because i honestly I, I don't know they changed up their entire schedule to not be like monday to sunday and they're now changing them like thursday to wednesday but they didn't post this last week's schedule so like the only one that i would have is today's so i'm just not gonna worry about it i need to i need to if someone has a contact with nifty gateway just i i, I want to talk to them about like getting me stuff in advance so that i can actually like you know do things anyway other than that we got a cool a couple of cool uh uh drops on maker's place this week uh the first one is uh tomorrow uh from lush sucks lush sucks is doing a piece called lush zucks lush zucks am lush i guessing zucks that, yeah like, is that a zuckerberg reference yeah, it's a zuckerberg that... reference oh, okay hey, i'm uh, trying i'm <sighs> trying to get to my dang notes and they're not working correctly your dingus get into the dingus my dingus there's the link if you there want it go. dave i've got <clears throat> i've got the link there we go maker's place here we go lush sucks there we go lush sorry, sucks sorry, sorry there we go so uh lush sucks this is so g- keep going down keep going keep going oh it looks oh. like uh i can hit play yeah there you go Delete this. <laughs> so, That's cool. 
Anyway, if y'all know Lush well, sucks. I like the Lush drone. Sucks. What's up with the drone here? I don't know. I think they're taking video. You know. Oh, there, it is. there you go. Nice. So Lush sucks <laughs> is doing another drop on the nineteenth and stuff. So that'll be fun. Um, then on the twentieth, here we go for corporate corporate uh, uh, corporate drops. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah, Chloe and Twix are doing a drop. <laughs> On the twentieth, <laughs> because when I think NFTs, when I think I NFTs, think Twix. I think of Twix. So yeah, this is funny though. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Chloe does like a, oh, you know these super left and right stuff. Twix. I would assume so. Yes, because they're facing so. different ways. <laughs> yeah, except the moon is facing a different way too. That wouldn't oh, be that's the case. Cheating! They just yeah, flipped it. They just flipped it. That's not so, cool. Anyway, that's not cool. Yep. Uh, that's on the 20th. Um, and then on the 21st, I'm really excited about this one. This one is really cool. Uh, Perry Cooper and uh, Late Night Renders did a collaboration together. Uh, this stuff looks super killer. I love it. Once Dave brings it up. you guys. Oh, see oh sorry. Like. I'm sitting here looking at it. and then, <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, this is really cool. Oh, you guys aren't so, watching it. Perry yeah. Cooper wow. and Late Night Whoa. Renders. This is great. Like, gorgeous stuff wow. really that really, really liquid like though right hold on, i want to see that liquid again hold on right I'm zoom out a little bit i feel like i'm zoomed in too yeah much. you are pretty zoomed in there we Ooh, go but like look at go. that yeah. that's gorgeous god that liquid that liquid looked mm. good it's a tasty I camera that, that was done in. that porcelain looks yeah. nice looks real yeah. nice so anyway that one that one is super pretty i'm i'm really excited about that one i think those ones look great um yeah mm. So that's it that's as it, far huh? as that's it as far as drops. I mean, how can we how can we work this out with uh, I don't know. with Nifty so that it's not midweek because we're everything is over by the time Monday yeah, I don't shows know. up. Maybe we have to do I don't know. I don't want to do another drop show, you know, <laughs> on like no. Thursday or something no. when they do it. And it's just like I don't know. I There's got to gotta be a way we can like get this an stuff hour out of the day. Hey everybody, yeah, this is us, yeah, making up for Nifty being suckers. <laughs> Um, anyway, whatever. David's piece sold this week yes, for forty uh, ETH for forty ETH, Holy which is shit. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Great. yeah. so congrats yeah. to him. That was his uh, his whales in space <laughs> uh, piece that he did um, a, a yeah. couple of years ago. So big shout out to him. That's great. Um, and then Raw Marks actually decided to do his mm-hmm. as well because he saw David doing like long form yeah. NFT stuff and he sold his for 33 ETH. And David awesome. was like, well, that's a good example of yeah. like marketing and circumstance and chance and all mm-hmm. of this, right? Like, because David was like, well, his piece should have sold for more than mine. Yeah, but was like. What, was what he commented on that. And it's like. It, it's, it's just it's luck all of the about, draw, right? It's all about now. And it's not luck of the draw. And, it's, well, it's, some of it. It's luck uh, of the draw, promotion, promotion, following. Yeah, marketing yourself, you know. Like, an yeah. artist isn't going to make anything if they don't... Uh, if they just put a piece up and just sit there, you know. Like, you have to be out there, like, talking to collectors and stuff. It's a full-time job. Yeah, it's a know? lot of work. And it, it is. It's a full-time job. So, uh, but yeah. I mean, congrats to both of them. That's still a lot oh, yeah. of money. You know? I know. I, I, w- I wouldn't balk at, you know, 33 ETH. <laughs> Hell, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm upset right now at the, uh, at the Mecca floor, which is uh, a whole nother thing. Let's talk, let's talk Meccas. Because, uh, let's actually, do that. let's talk collections right now. Because collections are, like, you know, the big thing that are going on. We've picked up a couple, like, The Visitors and Bone World and stuff like that. I really like these. I'm about to pick up another one. Actually, Dave, can you bring this up? Uh, these these ones are cool. I really like these. They're called Slim Hoods. Now, I oh, offer no hoods, financial yeah. information at right. all. Uh, 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 always buy NFTs at your own risk. But I came across these on Twitter, and I really liked them. Uh, is it Dave? You should have them in the notes. Yeah, I got oh, it. Oh, there you go. So, but mm-hmm. I like that they're like animated and stuff. They're cool, <laughs> you know. And um, uh, this artist, the the artist behind it, has been around for a while and has done some stuff that we've all seen, you know. So, uh, but yeah, it's cool. Like you get, you know, different hoods and you know different like hoodies and pants and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's it's cool. I like it. 
So, uh, yeah, this one's actually, uh, Mint starts in like seven minutes. So I'm going to pick one of these up while we're doing this. Nice. <clears throat> so the question about, yeah, seven minutes and 39 seconds. Yep. And the question about it, of course, becomes like, on any of these collections now, is this legit? Is this a yeah. pump and dump? Yeah, it's like the absolutely. Wild West. Yes, it right is one hundred percent the Wild West, and you you never know whether it's a pump and dump or not. For example, if you bring up uh, Dave, bring up that Twitter link, you know, from Soul mm. NFT Trader. So, especially yeah. from what I hear in the Solaris uh, marketplace or whatever, you're getting a lot of these people who are just pump and dumping. You know, where it's right. like. Well, where they'll create these things, they'll sell them off, and then they'll literally just disappear, pull the rug, roll up in a Lambo the yeah, next exactly. day. Yeah, exactly. So this one was one, um, I don't know what the name of the, the thing was, you know? Oh, the, the Soul Guardians Soul NFT. Guardians. I don't yeah. know if they're even around, but they were literally about to like start doing their minting, and someone found out that they were they had just pulled a $30 Unity uh, plug-in and we're creating all the avatars from that randomly. You know? And it's like, well, that's that's kind of shitty. And it's also against Unity's terms of service because they all have to be used in-game. You can't be selling them as NFTs. And it's like, what? how crappy is that? You know? So it's like, I don't know. You gotta kind of do a little bit of research when it comes to these collections. And the number one thing, like the biggest thing this week, freaking Mechas. Like it, yeah. There was, the mechs, the mechs were insane. Yeah. Like, okay, let's talk there, about this from the beginning, though, because let's you start. Have to, let's start you from have the to beginning. Tell everybody your story. Well, yeah, let's start from the all. beginning, right? Uh, does no one know? Uh, okay, anyway. no, we haven't had okay, a show yet. We haven't had a show. All right, so yeah. let's start from the beginning of mechas. Mechas, like you know, were these really highly detailed three D animation, you know, collections and stuff. If you don't know, if you're kind of like if you're on Twitter and you haven't seen these mechas, it's like. I'd be surprised. So there was a Forbes magazine article about them where they went from, you know, to uh, up to 250,000 Discord members in like a matter of months, which is insane to me. It's the fastest growing Discord. And this is one of the fastest, like, uh, 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 it, it's, it's may it's one of the top 20, like, assets sold or something like that whatever the 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 term is on open sea right and so they they had a bunch of trouble like minting them it wasn't i don't know if it was minting them but like there was a few times where they delayed and they were like okay we're gonna do it this day now we're gonna do it this day you know and so pre-sale pre-sale happened a hundred and seventy six thousand people entered you know and so uh if you you had to enter and then you'd come back the next day and find out to see if you won, you know? And if you won one, it was like $710 to mint, which is like pretty cheap, you know, for one of the highest wanted, you know, everyone I knew was trying to get a Mecca. And sure enough, I won one. I was really happy, you know? So I minted one for $710, you know? And so they hadn't released what they looked like yet. And they were supposed to release them. They were originally supposed to release them, I believe, on the 10th. And then, um, you know, it starts getting close to the 10th. And they're like, okay, no, we're actually going to release them on the 12th. It's like, seriously? Okay. So they had to come, like, they basically delayed the, the reveal. So everyone's got these mechas in OpenSea that are just like this logo, you know, and people are selling them and selling them and selling them. And the floor for these mechs go up to, like, almost 9 ETH at one point, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, that is insane for, for mechs that you don't even know what they look like. So this is going to be a super popular, you know, this is going to be great. This is, you know, they made $45 million and then like $100 million in secondary sales. There's a ridiculous amount of money being thrown around, right? And then uh, uh, the the reveal start, or they, they, they're like, okay, you know, like literally like 30 minutes before the reveal is supposed to happen. They push it off another four hours. And then by the end of that four hours, they're like, sorry, guys, we need another day. We noticed some look very similar. We need to re-render all 8,888 <laughs> of these mechs, right? 
on on how many 3090s? They were doing it. Uh, they were rendering the entire project across four machines, or uh, yeah, four machines that each had three 3090s in it. You know, and it's like, yo, I can help you out there. Do you need <laughs> yeah. Do you need some help? You know, we got That's at like least me that among us, yeah. right? That's like me and you rendering the entire thing. So anyway, and so like it yeah. started. It started creating like this, like real uneasiness, you know, in the Discord and stuff. And like, you've got the two creators that really aren't like they're not active in the Discord. And like, for people, people who I guess like do these collections and stuff, you can see really popular ones are the ones who are really active and have like a really good, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, like future planned out. What's the word? Um, nah, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I I can't remember. I, I I don't know what the word is. <laughs> I can't think. I'm so tired right now. I'm on like day two of no caffeine. Force foresight? No. Is that the word? You, what no, are you looking? Like, what are you, yeah. You plan ahead. What's your plan? What's the plans for the future? Come on, people. Where's my <laughs> chat at? Uh, foresight. Anyways. I don't know. No, whatever. Anyway. They've got great future plans, you know. Um, foresight. Yeah, so, no, it's not foresight. <laughs> Foresight's predicting the future. That's what they're talking about. Roadmap. Insight? Holy Roadmap. crap! Okay. So as thank you, go. thank you. <laughs> Roadmap. As long as you know, a lot of the collections. As long as they've got a good roadmap and they're like talking with in the Discord and stuff, and they're active, like people feel very confident about. Oh, my timer just went off. I got to go buy one of these things. So anyway, people feel like really confident about like uh, the uh, the 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 future of this and that what they're spending will be well, you know. And so as soon as as soon as the the drop actually happened a day later, once they had to re-render them, they started happening. Them. Everyone was really excited. They look beautiful. They still look beautiful, you know. And then uh, uh, you, you something happened to where one person who was like a part of the team or like something had gotten one that was really really rare you know like super duper like legendary rare super rare and yeah super rare so and everyone was like oh this is bs they just picked people you know like the api got leaked they knew this blah 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 and so between that and them like you know not being talkative and like you know not active and not having a good roadmap ever as soon as they got revealed and the rarities started coming out everyone started selling it went from 9 eth it is currently at 1.53 eth so i don't know you could, I, you it's could hard pick to up a like mecha this had right such now such a great build up though like yeah i agree you could pick up a mecha right <sighs> now for like what is it what eth is like 3700 or something oops times 1.56 is the floor for $5700 you could pick up a mecha you know and, yeah, and it was like, 20 grand the other day it, it was like it went up to 30 grand the other day yeah. which is insane to me that's crazy you and your you dang know? luck with these things though man i don't know how you nah it's 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 you just you win everything you sell everything high somehow I haven't. Yeah. I haven't sold like no. the only thing that I, I I didn't win a people. We we all bought a people. <laughs> you know, I just so happened to sell it at the right time because it was basically driving me absolutely insane having this thing that was worth so much money that I was constantly pricing it at the lowest price point in order to try and get it sold. Right, I was act. I was active on it. I couldn't do any work for that like m- two month well, span. Yeah. You know. Anyway, I think so. It, but what's yeah. upsetting is the Mechaverse stuff. Like, if you look at all of them, you can see them all on OpenSea. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. You know. I think they. I think I still believe very much in this this project. And I would say, if you're going to get into it, you know, that's a really good price point to get into it. You know. I still it's think Megaverse is going to do well, man, and it's right just going to take a couple months, which is fine. I wasn't planning on selling my mech at least until January because I don't want to pay the friggin' taxes on it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, but it's the wild west right now. It, it is. It's like there's, it's like stocks. There's no regulation. It's, yeah. it's insane. There's scams everywhere. 
And but, they're calling it Web 3. Web 2, well, Web 2 was what they were calling Web 2.0 back yeah. in, like, 2005. You know, dig.com and all of that was Web 2.0. And now they're saying this is Web 3. Yeah. The, the I, crypto, all I, of that. I blockchain. think, with, uh, jumping back to Metaverse, you know, I think a lot of the people, there were a lot of people trying to, like, create like this this there was a lot of people who were angry that they just didn't get picked you know and so like oh i didn't win the lottery the lottery's rigged right <laughs> oh i didn't Sounds win the election familiar. the election's rigged right yeah. you know mm-hmm. there's just a bunch of people who were super butthurt about not being picked that like they were like oh yeah this is totally fake blah 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 you know it didn't help that someone from the team happened to buy it on the secondary market you know and it just so happened to be a legendary one but they have since released all this stuff saying no like everything was legit this is a legit project here's more things about it but you can't like the initial like tweet storm and like whatever about all the negativity that got brought onto them at the beginning has really hurt their brand you know anyway well here's the thing about about that apparently there's some sort of when these are minted and you don't know what they are apparently there's some sort of spreadsheet and thing about how they figure out what's going to be inserted where and we're, we're going to have to talk to Billy about this because I do not understand the intricate workings of setting up these collections whatsoever. Like, I just don't. And and Billy was explaining stuff in a way that I'm failing to reiterate right now, but t- made total sense to me when he explained it. And he's going to be on the show in a few weeks, and I think we're going to have a really, really in-depth conversation yeah. about NFTs and crypto and passwords and MetaMask and all the things. Well, I can't get a so. slim hood because I don't have enough money to cover the the freaking gas uh, fees. The gas fees. Yeah, dude. I mean, are you surprised? Gas fees are literally twice what uh, twice what the actual like minting cost is. It's ridiculous. There's also there's also a lot of people who are getting people to do stuff on Fiverr and then minting it. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. those kind of scams, yeah. and there's so many things. There's mutant cat. Are mutant cats good? I have no idea. Mutant cats? I thought Maybe. you put a, a link to that somewhere as well. Did I? I uh, no. Okay, so the mutant cats thing is, and this is another thing. Okay, so mutant cats, and you got to be weary of this stuff because, like, okay, so mutant cats are a new thing that are supposed to create secondary, like. Uh, how do I explain this? Okay. So uh, uh, there's these certain NFTs that you buy, this certain collection, right? You buy them and you get, you are gifted, like with, uh, with mutant cats, you're gifted fish, right? So you get 10 fish a day, right? And then for like, say, 600 fish, you can offspring to a child or something like that which you can then sell on the secondary market or something like that so you get you it, you're it, it they they say you're creating passive income by just like getting these fish or you could sell the fish that you get per day like you know say they're worth like a dollar oh there's nine dollars per day that you can sell and so you're getting passive income because people are but the the whole thing with this is and this is the so f- the the frustrating part is it's all a game right that part is all a game and if people are not playing the game you're not going to make passive income you know i i don't know it's the the crypto kongs i think were one of these the first collections to do this with like bananas and stuff like that and then these mutant cats or one uh, or another one but it's like eventually someone's gonna stop playing the game and eventually you know you're not gonna be making bananas or fish anymore you know you're not gonna be making passive income it's 100 percent reliant on people playing the game um <laughs> wow <laughs> and i can't yeah. buy a slim hood and i'm sad about it <laughs> <laughs> oh we we have a, a community drop that we need to mention Yes. 
Yes. I don't have the email. Is it in the It's the from show Gaten. Notes? Yeah, it's yeah, from yeah. Gaten D. Simone. He uh, was uh, he's OG, OG listener yeah. from back in the day. He used to used to um, send us emails all the time. Uh, if you remember the limited edition Gaten D. Simone very limited uh, edition. shirt that we had, the computer and the blobby things coming out of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, he says, hey, guys, just wanted to hit you up and share two projects I recently worked on. One is a generative NFT project called Block Party. Just a bunch of goofy, fresh cake theme faces on squares. Super fun to figure out how to automatically export variations of different characters from Photoshop quickly using a script. Uh-huh. Found here. who he sent it. Don't tell anybody. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. And a little organization. I did have to tweak the script a bit to get it to work overall, but it was a really fun experiment. Second is a VR project I work on for Nickelodeon this past That's fun. year. That posted in August. I think the MoGraph community would find it interesting. Using After Effects character animation and some 2D animated scenes from Harmony, we managed to stitch together a three-minute VR piece of content. The challenge was taking 2D assets made for TV and converting them over to an equi rectangular image equi <laughs> equi re- I don't I don't know how to say that this was achieved by creating the room first as an why does he keep putting this word in there equi rectangular equi rectangular image <laughs> Then placing the characters with alphas on top using a bulge effect to skew them worked pretty well. A few small things I would have done differently, but overall it was a nice challenge. Lincoln, guy in the couch, and Lucy, girl in the fireplace, are character animator puppets. Hope you guys are doing well. And link below. So let me bring up the NFT page for a fresh cake. You've probably seen these on the Instas things. Uh, uh, so all of these right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so I that. just so happen to have the uh, Apple thing just playing in the background, and I look over. Uh, uh-huh. Jules is actually on it. Oh wow, that's why. Yeah. Is he on stage? Yeah, he was on like at around like twenty nine minutes. That's hilarious. Like, oh, they just I didn't like, know that. they cut to him and he's talking. Oh, I don't wow. know what he's oh, saying. That's awesome. We're gonna have to get a clip yeah. of that now for sure. Ooh, fresh and, cake. Uh, okay, so it's actually on. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's on Open Sea. Yeah. And then the other the other link, which isn't NFT related, but I'll just I'll just bring it out here so we can see it. I'll put this in the show notes for the episode. Uh, this is uh, title. I missed the title. Three sixty VR with Lincoln and the Loud House family. And so let me go back to uh, full screen so you can see that here. Um, yeah, he's man. He's such a great artist. Uh, and. You know, if you follow his Instagram, he puts all of his sketches and all doodles and all the things that he's working on. So make sure you check him out. Put a link to uh, his Instagram and everything in the show notes as mm-hmm. well. So uh, check that out. Very cool. And, yes. Um, I had notes all over the place today. Got some crypto uh, crypto notes that mm-hmm. I will put in the show notes. Uh, just some funny things. Like, there's a video called, um, If Cryptocurrency Was Honest... Yeah. Which is kind of a, a funny video. I don't know if you've seen that one. I haven't, not, no. But yeah, so you'll have to check that out. So, anyway. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Look who it is. <laughs> you know, hey, man. I mean, hi, Dorby. <laughs> I just uh, came by to wish Dave congrats on his new litter. Yeah, yeah, no, that one was coming. Okay. Yeah, I was just talking to my English bulldog friend about NFT Shark's advice the other day. Yeah. And uh, he took it to heart, and uh-huh. he started making money. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, so NFT Shark is here again. He's got a new crypto tip for you this week. Okay. Always looking forward to those. And uh, by the way, by the way, before I go, you know how you can tell the difference between a bulldog and an English bulldog? <laughs> Their accent? Yeah. The accent. Ah, yeah. I was right. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, all right. So, I guess NFT Shark is on his way in. I guess oh I can't be in the same room at the same time. You know, <laughs> something like that. So, oh, there he is. Strange, huh? Bro. I would just Bro. like everyone to. I would just like to remind everyone that uh, NFT Shark's advice does not constitute. <laughs> it's um, not legally binding. It's not legally binding. We do not. We do not support uh, uh, NFT Shark's. Bro, what's up? Bro, what's up? Bro, 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 yeah, bro, yeah. Look, look, look. You gotta go out there. Okay. Here's what you're gonna do. 
Mm-hmm. You got to get yourself some of this new coin. It's called Yeezy Coin. Yeezy? Yeezy Coin? Easy Yeezy or Yeezy? Bro. Oh, my bro, God. Yeezy Coin. Bro, it's overrated. It's hyperinflated. And it has a smug sel- sense of self-worth. Everything you need in a crypto coin. Right. Yeezy coin. Yeezy coin. Yeah, but if you could just, like, you know, help us socialize this and just get it out there in the space. We're really excited about it in this space. So, uh, Yeezy coin. Make sure you buy that. All right. I got an awesome little bye-bye. I'll catch you later. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. He doesn't do the shark puns. Thanks, <laughs> NFT You sharks. just look forward to his coins. <laughs> And it won't be every week. All right, all right. I'll, I'll continue Thank the dog Thank you for puns. explaining it, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I thought you were worried. You just have to know, you know. Yeah. Any other oh, crypto man. things we want to talk about this week? Jake, you got any drops or any available crypto art? No? Not right now. I, uh, I got something big coming up at some point soon. I don't really have a date mm-hmm. for it yet, but it was a really oh, yeah. cool collaboration. Yeah. Um, with, with Twix. You gotta make sure you s- send with it to us. Twix or, yeah, with Twix. or Tide Pods or something like Tide that. Potentially Tide Pods, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah Tide Pods. I'll make sure to send it you guys way before it's coming out and cool. let you know when That's it's cool. coming. Um, but yeah, it'll be a good one. It's a collaboration that I've been trying to get at for a while, so I'm happy that. Cool. Yeah, it'll be fun. Rock on. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. That well, it for the drop? Yeah, if anyone else has a drop that they would like us to shill on the show... Um, feel free to send us uh, an email, info at mograph.com, and we will shill it and get and 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 make sure all the the uh, man. I'm learning all sorts of new terms, like yeah, like I, on this no, like fudding, fuds, fudding? like all the fuds, fungible. You know what fuds are? Fungible sounds. Like I had to look a this sponge up. with fungus. I don't know what means. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. All the fudders, uh, you know, who are yeah. just like. Angry and the paper hands. I knew paper hands. Then diamond hands. Too much to keep up with, man. Man, I'm telling you. Yes, I'm not in enough clubhouse audio chats. (laughs) Holy shit. Dude, the amount of discords I'm in now, you know, just because, like, I'm... I'm, I'm liking the collection. Turn off those <laughs> DMs, though. Yeah, I know. God, those Definitely. DMs. Turn off all your DMs on your like global oh, DMs or whatever on so Discord. Stupid. You will get you will get hacked so fast. Hey, you got to do this thing. You got to yeah, click I'm on like, this thing. God, Check out dude. this new current. I mean, just yep. you know, it's Crypto Shark. It's Crypto Shark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Minus minus the fun and crypto, the puns. Crypto Shart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> crypto Shart. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Just cool. ask Crypto Shark. He'll bite. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my bell? I is. could throw there him in is. there. Yeah, I don't know. Yep. I don't know. All right, well, let's get out of the drop. Let's get out of the drop. The drop. Drop, drop, drop. Is this the fucking mic? Drop. This is exactly what I should be doing. <laughs> right. Jake, thank you so much yeah, for being yeah, on man. the show today. It's been fun. I appreciate you guys yeah, having me on. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, People want to find you on the interwebs. Where can they find you at? They can find me on my Instagram at Wandering Animal. Uh, they can find me on Twitter, which I rarely use these days, at Jake underscore Ferguson underscore. Or I was going to say, I looked up Wandering Animal on Twitter, and it's like, that is not you. Somebody has it, man. <laughs> I'm pissed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's so random. That's what I get for joining Twitter like this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my own fault. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, you can also find my email and other contacts on my website, which is just jferguson.tv, awesome. along with all my work. Cool, cool man. Cool. Yeah, well, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah, thank yeah. you. We're going to get out of here. You can rate us on iTunes, leave a review, helps get our ratings up. Subscribe on your podcatcher of choice. We've also got that newsletter that you can scr- mm-hmm. subscribe to on the site. You can say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the MoGraph logo tee, the classic Feel the Bab shirt, Feel the Bab 2020. All the profits from that go to Doctors Without Borders. Render Things t-shirt, hoodie, and long sleeve tee. Hey, it's that time of year for that. Uh-huh. You know, Get yourself one of those. Uh, especially that uh, that hoodie, the Render Things hoodie. Yeah. yeah, you can have your pumpkin spice latte, <laughs> stay warm, you know, and whatnot. And uh, the that render is fire shirt, which you are only allowed to wear ironically, unless, <laughs> unless you're shams. You're shams. Yeah. And then the MoGraph blandishment shirt as well. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, MoGraph.com. Make sure you check us out there. Look at the TikToks. We got some good TikToks. Yeah, we do. Got some TikToks that you might not see in certain places unless you're on a reels page or something on Instagram. So Mm -hmm. subscribe to us there or whatever you call it over there. I don't know. Follow. Follow. And uh, maybe we could start some live stuff. 
mm-hmm. at, at some point, if we can get the numbers up, got to help me beat the numbers that my daughter has because currently <laughs> she is beating us. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. So I guess uh, that about wraps it up. Until next time, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And I'm Jake. Have a good one. Later, yo. It's pretty good, I guess. MoGraph.com, an online resource for motion graphic artists. Start your week with the MoGraph podcast, industry news, interviews with your favorite artists, and terrible humor. Watch live shows and interviews from MoGraph events like NAB, SeaGraph, HalfRes, and local meetups. <laughs> Our MoGraph talks feature live demos and motivation from artists all around the world. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. What if Rick and Morty show up for the countdown at midnight? That's where I peaked in life, in my career. We gotta stop this thing, Rick! It's gonna kill us all! Hear from the people that create your software, design your render engines, and artists that are changing the face of modern motion graphics. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? MoGraph tutorials and online classes will teach you about Cinema 4D, After Effects, as well as other popular software and render engines. Throw in the HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. Branch into new software, learn time-saving tips, techniques, workflows, and lessons that'll keep you up to date in the world of motion design. Oh, brother, those are some of my favorite elves. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join the conversation in our live sessions, check out our plugins, or join the hundreds of daily active users in our Slack channel for technical help, advice, contests, or just to joke around. Real nice banana. Ah, that's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Subscribe today and get the latest updates on our YouTube and other social media channels. Take all your dreams and just do it! We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe to MoGraph.com.